I didn't even think about that. That's oh, we didn't. We don't have it. No, it's supposed to go right there. Uh, I totally forgot about it. Wrong way. Can I be heard at the very least? Probably. What Somewhat. Do you mean? Can I be heard? Am I on right now? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you are on. All right, beautiful. Oh, these windows give me trouble every week. Oh, that. Oh. Thank you for letting me know. Got you. Hello, Buffett. Fantasy question, okay? Mitch Trubisky, the Bears quarterback, okay. against the Jets, or Andy Dalton against the uh, Buccaneers? Oh, man, I don't know. Trubisky's been hot. Yeah. So who's, who's he the Jets.
some kids. <laughs>
That is a weapon. Someone, someone get him. <laughs> How did he get through with that? You got 54, 2, 21, and 15. 21 and 15. Still doing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the Mustang, number two, James Lee. That's definitely good. Number 15, Blaine Armstrong, number 21, Andre Williams, and number 54, Connor Ball. This week at 0 and 5 in Lone Star Conference play, there's going to be a lot of desperation on both sides. They've got a losing streak dating back to the beginning of this season. They're 0 and 7. Obviously, they've lost all five games uh, in LSC competition, and so have the Havilinas. So there's going to be a lot of frustration, desperation, and probably uh, some, uh, some interesting ways that I think both teams are going to try to score some points tonight. Yeah, I think for Western New Mexico, the key has to be just that old saying, throw caution to the wind. Like, you're 0-7, you're playing on the road. Who cares? Take some chances. Try some different things. Well, what what purpose would it serve being cautious or careful? You, you're just trying to come on the road and pick up a win. You're 0-7 this season. I think being aggressive, much in the same way that they were last year, needs to be the hallmark of the way this team competes tonight. Julio De La Garza set to kick it off for the Havilinas. We'll be moving from left to right for those of you listening on KTAI. And Justin Harris is back deep at his own six-yard line to receive this boot from Julio De La Garza. Thank you again for tuning in yeah, to Havelina football on this Saturday night. It's homecoming. Football. It's throwback weekend. We are ready to go. And De La Garza blasts this kickoff into the end zone. Justin Harris lets it go through the back of the end zone for the touchback. And Blaine Armstrong will lead this offense out first and 10 at their own 25. Armstrong, I mentioned, a junior from Marshfield, Missouri has completed 55% of his passes, 1,134 yards to his credit, six touchdowns, six interceptions this season. Has also run for 73 yards. And we'll give you the rest of the starting lineup for Western New Mexico in a moment. And actually, correction, Nate, bring this to my attention. I believe it's Gabriel Tomaszewski handing it off on a read option to DeAndre Williams, who gains a yard. And sorry, Tomaszewski making his first start of the season. Tomaszewski finished up for the Mustangs last week against A&M Commerce. Through six, through 15 uh, passes, completed four. six of them for 56 oh. yards and a, and a pair of interceptors, no touchdowns. Second and nine, play fake, throwing deep left side, over the head of Corday Roberts, a flag though comes in from the secondary, thrown by the field judge. I think they're going to get the Hogs for pass interference. Pass for number three. Starting Elijah. behind Tom Mazuski is DeAndre Williams at running back among the receivers. Corday Roberts, Elijah Jones, and Evan Beebe will be the main three with Isaac Crichton, the tight end. On the offensive line, Titus Timoteo is the center. Isley Moana and Tony Harper are the guards. The right tackle, Keeney Makaneola, and the left tackle, Chris Jordan Ulafale. And they call Aaron Jackson for pass interference. And that will give Western New Mexico the first first down of the evening. For the Hogs on defense, tonight, Caleb Valentine back in the lineup at defensive end with Brandon Jones. Inside are Cody Gardner and Vaughn Taylor, Jalen Harris, and Michael Tuff, the linebackers. Aaron Jackson and Tra and Jordan Seminot are the corners with Sean Landis, Peyton Hendricks, Devontae Williams, the defensive backs. Rolling right is Tom Azuski trying to throw deep for Roberts, and that sails out of bounds. As Incomplete, it'll be second and ten. Number four, Roberts. 
And Western coming out aggressive, letting Tom Azuski, who's just 9 of 22 on the season coming in for 67 yards, throw the football against this Havelina defense. Shotgun, four receivers, ball on the hash on the near side. The Hogs jump off side, Tom Azuski, a free play, throws it deep and gets leveled by Kayla Valentine just as the line judge blew the whistle. Tom Azuski probably saying, hey guys, don't do me any favors. They let that play go just long enough for Tom Azuski to get buried by Valentine. But that was through no fault of Valentine's, at least other than the offsides. And a big key for this Tablander defense, even with that penalty, to have Kayla Valentine back in the lineup. Uh, you know, he's very disruptive in, the, uh, in opponents' backfields. Uh, it's important to have him back, and maybe he's just a little bit jump-started on homecoming weekend. Uh, with those early first quarter nerves. Not to mention anxious to get back on the field if they're missing the last few weeks. Shotgun, Roberts goes in motion. Tom Azuski with a keeper. Now a pitch right for Roberts. Turns to get back inside the 45. Nick Stiff is right there, and they're going to bury Roberts for a yard loss. Valentine also in on the hit, but Stiff, the safety man, came up to make the stop. And it'll be third down. This is a Western team that converts third downs at a rate of 26%. That's 160th in the country out of 167 Division II teams. And this will be third down and six. Just underway in the first quarter. Just over a minute off the clock. Shotgun four receivers. Tom Zuski. Keeper as he goes right up the middle on the read option. He'll get to about the 49. 49. He'll be about three yards short of the first down. And Western wasted no time sending on Colin Cooper. Grady and the punt team. But if I'm the highest, I'm not taking anything for granted. Watch out for a fake right here with the ball at midfield. Donovan Moore will go back to receive the punt. Back to punt number 20, Colin Grady. Grady is also the starting linebacker with a line drive rugby style kick that bounces inside the 10. Is picked up on a bounce by Moore in at about the 6, and he's dropped right there. Not a terrible play by Moore other than being obviously a dangerous one because that ball was going to keep bouncing. So he might have saved the Hogs 7 yards by giving the field position at the 8-yard line. First and 10 there for Coy Demmer and company. Well, going back to uh, that defensive stand for the Javelinas, the two penalties at least started to make you think that okay well this isn't the start that you want but they were able to recover and keep them at the 50 yard line at the very least to give Coy Detmer and the offense a chance to uh, explode here. And that's another big question mark going into this game. The last two weeks this defense has really been beaten up by MSU Texas and Tarleton. How are they going to bounce back and respond? Detmer handoff right side for Jeff Carr tries to turn the corner cuts back towards the inside crosses the 10 and is t tackled at about the 13. Coy Detmer Jr. obviously starting at quarterback once again. The junior quarterback from Somerset, Texas. Entering the game with 1,535 yards to his credit. 12 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Has completed over 60% of his passes. Called the starting running back. Aaron Dilworth in as a single receiver split wide to the left. With Brent Hurtel, Torrey Thomas, and now Tyler Wilson also. When Wilson splits out to wide to the right. Hertel and Thomas, wide left, shotgun for Detmer, back to throw a quick pass, left side for Thomas, who gathers it in, and falls near the first down marker, and that will move the chains. First down, Havelin is on the offensive line, Moses Horn at center, with the guards for the Havelinas, Armando Castillo, and Kyle Quino, Justin Johnson, and Narciso Grimaldo are the tackles. James Viafale and Matt Garcia are the defensive ends for Western New Mexico with James Lee and Connor Mowat on the inside. Colin Grady, Roosevelt, Calhoun are the linebackers with five defensive backs in the normal set for the team in purple. Detmer play action, back to pass, wants to go deep, lays it up long, Tyler Wilson, middle of the fifth of the 40, overthrew him. Ball landed about the 32 while Wilson was at the 35. Defensive backfield for Western New Mexico, B. John Counter and Matthew Macon are the corners. Isaiah Edwards, Eric Dorsey, Isaiah Pierre are the safeties. And there's that deep shot that we talked about in pregame. Let's see the Havlinas try. They tried it, and Wilson was open. But Detmer, who certainly did not look like a quarterback without an arm on that play, fired just a little bit too far for his junior receiver. 
Second and 10, Detmer. Quick pass left, batted in the air. And right there to make the play for Western New Mexico was James Lee. So now it will be third down and 10. Detmer with an empty backfield. Ryan Martinez near side slot to the right side. Western bringing a blitz. Detmer over the middle through the hands of Donovan Moore. Pops up but falls to the ground. That was anyone's football for a moment. Hogs get one first down but have to punt after that. And Della Garza comes out for the boot while Kude Roberts will go back to receive it. We go back to those penalties on the first defensive drive for Texas A&M Kingsville. They stopped the Mustangs at the 50-yard line, but they started deep. The offense started deep on their own side of the field, and now with this punt, there's a good chance that the Mustangs can have solid field position at around the 35 or 40-yard line. The Garza, who had one blocked last year against Western, gets this off. Roberts feels the 37, running left is wrapped up by Jacob Armstrong, and then bowled over by Devontae Williams. Good special teams coverage, nothing on the return for Roberts. That, by my count, is 45-yard punt by De La Garza. No return. Check the way it is. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced. And then you're in kickoff. 
Glenn, do you have any idea who's in that room down there? But do you know who, who's down there in that room right now? Okay, Chris doesn't talk this much. Someone else is in there. He's talking way too much. Judge now tell the chain game move it is a first down they finally got the message and it's first and ten Havilinas and now players cycling in and out the play clocks at 18 some confusion but now Denver has the call and heads into the huddle Armstrong Dilworth near side Far side, the only receiver is Tyler Wilson. Two men in the backfield. Now Dilworth comes in motion. They fake to him. Now they give it to him. Left side end around. Gets tripped up around midfield. They'll give him to the 49. That's a five-yard gain. Tripped up by number 24, Matthew Macon. Now we've not seen more in that shotgun yet, but certainly plenty of kind of tricky plays or unusual plays you'd say from the perspective of this offense so him far. coming out of the backfield on the previous play and and seeing Dilworth get a carry I don't think we I don't think I've seen that at home I don't think uh, this Dilworth year Dilworth or more have or um, more have carried the ball not more Wilson have carried the ball all season pass left side for Thomas bobbles that he was going out of bounds but the official says he secured it that's a three-yard gain to the 46 so Maybe I can get the words out this time. I don't think I've seen Dilworth or Wilson carry the ball all season out until tonight. Forty-six-yard line, third down and three. Pick at thirty-two. And Tamuk looking to get to the forty-four of Western New Mexico. And two tight ends, left side, Thomas and Hertel. Two receivers, one to either side. Now Wilson, or make that Hertel. And Thomas going motion to the right side, the wide side of the field. Denver to throw, a blitz coming, steps up, going to run. He has the room for the first down. He slides close to the marker. But I think they're going to give him the line to gain. 
He was very close to going down too early, but the referee first signals down. first down, and the Haas keep the chains moving. It was kind of an awkward slide. He kind of slid knee first instead of sliding. Uh, it was with almost the like a coordinated fall as opposed to a slide. Mm -hmm. But for Detmer, got the job done. And for these quarterbacks, when they see a defender coming from one side, they're going to try and slide and fall away from the guy coming with a full head of steam. I think that's what Detmer was doing there. Now Detmer back into the pistol formation. Four men split out with trips to the left side. Moore is a single receiver right side. Detmer to throw. Looking near side for Moore. Threw his hands incomplete. In coverage was Nolan Briggs. Second and 10 from the Mustang 44. 7.58 to go in the first quarter. It's 7-0 Mustangs. Havlin is in their usual helmets, the white helmets with Havlin is written in script blue with gold piping on either side. Blue stripe down the middle flanked by a pair of gold stripes. Tight ends go in motion to the right side, Hertel and Thomas. Two receivers left, Peller on the deep man on the pistol. Gets the handoff, runs right side, cuts up the southern across the 40. Charging was Grigsby, but he got hogtied a little bit. Seven or eight yards. Out and that allowed Pelerin to get upfield and turn it into a positive gain. Western New Mexico with purple helmets on the Five left side of the helmet. And there's an injury. I'm not sure. I don't see a player down. But a player might have gone down and stayed down long enough for them to call the officials timeout. Western with Purple helmets on the left side of the helmet is the player's number in gold. On the other side is a gold Mustang on the the purple headgear. So it'll be third and four once we come out of this timeout. 7.52 to go. We are in the first quarter at 7 nothing Western New Mexico. Mark and Sarah alongside Nate Cortiso. And so important for the Hogs to blunt the momentum right now that Western got as a result of that 61-yard touchdown run. I think for uh, for Texas A&M Kingsville, you're going up against a defense that is allowed that allows the most yards per game uh, rushing the football with 208 yards per game. Uh, the Mustangs give up, and you know while we've seen some you know some not quite trickery, but we've seen Dilworth get a carry. We've seen Donovan Moore out of the backfield. Sometimes I think you need to, to think about getting the ball back to uh, Carr or Pelrin uh, and those running backs that ha the Javelinas have because at some point, this Mustang defense is going to crack. Third and four, three receivers for Detmer. Play fake to Pelrin, looking left flat, under pressure, escapes one defender, but is sacked at the 43-yard line by Colin Grady. Detmer was just supposed to throw it quick into the flat left side, I believe, for Jacob Armstrong, but it wasn't there, and then the pressure collapsed the pocket. Detmer could only escape so many purple jerseys before he was sacked by Grady. That's Grady's first sack of the season. He evaded two Mustang defenders and probably saved about two yards from this being a fourth down and 11 to just a fourth and nine. De La Garza trying to drop it inside the 20 as Roberts back to receive it. Good snap. High, short pooch kick by De La Garza to the left side that bounces the 16, bounces to about the 13, and then rolls back to the 14-yard line. So a short punt by De La Garza, only 29 yards, but it accomplishes its goal of putting Western more than 80 yards away from the end zone. We were at 7.03 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 Western New Mexico. Thank you for joining us on Homecoming here in Kingsville. And Western New Mexico getting prepared to take over at their own 15-yard line. And this is the, the point in time in the game. If you're the Havlinas, you really are going to be begging for a turnover. It goes to that aggressiveness that we talked about in, in the pregame. Let's see the, this team put a little bit of pressure on this Western offense. See if you can force them into a mistake that will jumpstart the offense. There's something that can be done. And if we look at last week's game against Commerce, Kingsville Commerce was leading seven to nothing. Last week's game against Tarleton. Or last week's game for uh, Western New oh, Mexico. Go ahead, Nate. Uh, for uh, their game against Commerce, they were down seven to nothing to the Lions. 
Uh, Tomaszewski throws an interception for a touchdown to make it 14 to nothing. Mustangs get the ball back. He throws another t uh, interception for a touchdown that makes it 21 to nothing. So he c has the ability, or he has shown that he can make mistakes if he gets pressure uh, on his offensive line uh, and himself. Make sure you're showing your hungry spirit. Now the question that we left out of that is how many opportunities are you going to get to put pressure on Tomaszewski? Are they just going to give the ball to their running backs? Justin Harris is in now instead of DeAndre Williams. First and ten, Tomaszewski, read option, hand up to Williams, is smothered in the backfield by Caleb Valentine. And no one happier to have Caleb Valentine back than defensive coordinator Haskell Buff. Valentine just blew up that play. That's a two-yard loss. Valentine had eight tackles for loss this season before missing the last three games. Four receivers to the near side left. One receiver right. Empty backfield for Tomaszewski. And here is the chance for the Hogs to put pressure and try and force a mistake. Roberts comes in motion. Just we hand off to Roberts' right side. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and Devontae Williams says, you'll go no further. Throws him down at the 15. So they get back. The yard is lost by Harris, but now it's third and 10. And here's where I'd expect to see a blitz. Game of two brings up third down in the original 10. Hawks with three down linemen, Valentine Jones and Jamar Davis in the middle. Thomas Husky play fake. Back to throw looking. Left side just throwing up a jump ball that is bobbled and incomplete intended for Ugo Ezema. Covered by Aaron Jackson. That was almost like a fade route you'd see in the end zone. Just let the guy run and throw it up and see who can win the jump ball. It was similar to the throw he had when Aaron Jackson was called for pass interference on the first drive for Western New Mexico. It was sort of lofted into the air and, you know, was up for grabs for either a Javelina or a Mustang to come up with it. And now with Grady punting, maybe a chance for Tamut to take advantage of good field position. Grady gets the snap and gets off a high good kick that Tron Landis waits for. It bounces in Havelina territory. And now we'll roll inside the 45 to the 44. So a good punt by Grady. That one covers 39 yards. And Tamuk will begin this drive with good field position at their own 44. Hogs come right out. With three tight ends, Kyle Williams, Torrey Thomas, and Brent Hertel. Williams has not had a catch since the Eastern New Mexico game back on the 22nd. When he caught three passes. And at the car left side. And Carr picks up four to the 48. 7-0 is our score. 5-13 to go. We're in the first quarter here at Havlina Stadium, the site of Pepsi Field. Detmer in the shotgun, four receivers, two to either side. Jeff Carr in the backfield with Detmer. And up to Carr, up the middle, across midfield. Cuts right, gets to the 48 before he is tripped up. And that's a four-yard run. That'll bring up a very manageable third down and two for this offense. And they bring in an extra tight end in Brent Hurtel. Detmer, pistol formation, tight ends to the right side, two receivers left. Got another throw over the middle for Thomas. Caught across the 40, is hit and dropped immediately, but he has the first down. To move gains nine to move the chains. And this is their furthest penetration so far tonight.
Martinez, Dilworth, and Torrey Thomas are the receivers left side with Dilworth the wide man. Near side is Donovan Moore. Shotgun. Detmer play fake to Pellerin. Over the middle has Martinez. Open up the 25. Breaks free to the 20. 10. 5. Touchdown, Havelino. Inside slant to Martinez and man coverage beat his defender like a drum and was gone. So the Hogs cash in from 39 yards out. There's Martinez's first touchdown as a Havelina. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. Point. High snap, but Rosalini gets it down for the PAT. The kick is no good as it no sails good. wide right. right. Attempt, to you by so with 3.46 to go, with 46 remaining in, the first in the first quarter, the Hadley is still trailed. The score is 7-6. to six. And Casey Rosalini looked like he got that ball down after the high snap. But that might have thrown off the time and just enough to make the other so hook it to their right. But the Hogs get good field position. They turn it into a touchdown. They're right back in this football game late in the first quarter. But it's mis it's mistakes like those uh, on, on extra points. In a game like this where we've seen Western New Mexico come out and establish the run game and show the ability to score points and capitalize on their extra points as well, the margin for victor, the margin of error for both teams coming into tonight's game, very, very slim. And whatever opportunities you have to get easy points, you have to convert them if you're the Javelinas. For Detmer, that was his 13th touchdown pass of the season. And as I mentioned, Martinez, his first score as a Javelina comes from 39 yards out. And that answers the score that Western New Mexico put up at the 11-17 mark when DeAndre Williams raced 61 yards for his first touchdown of the season. The missed PAT by De La Garza past the Howling. They're still trailing by a point at 7-6 to six at 3.46 mark in quarter number one. And that moment has got to mean everything to a kid like Martinez. Grew up in Kingsville, attended King High School uh, here in the city to score a touchdown on homecoming has got to mean everything to that young man. And with Martinez only being a sophomore, he'll have plenty more opportunities to try and cross that goal line in front of this home crowd. Hogs will have seven home games once again next season. So plenty of opportunities for you in 2019, the same as it was in 2018, to come out and check out these Havilinas. Five of their first six contests next year are at home. So every opportunity for this team to get off to a good start in 2019, trying to build some momentum heading into that season with a good finish here to 2018. Justin Harris back to receive this kick. Harris averaging 22 yards a return on eight kickoff runbacks. We'll take this one a yard deep. We'll run it out. Right side of the five. Cuts to the middle to the fifth to the ten to the fifteen to the twenty. Still crossing the field. Gets upfield to the twenty-five and is ridden down at the thirty by Keyshawn Rowe, Kaysan Franklin, and Leandre Dever. 30-yard run back, and Western New Mexico begins this drive right at the 30-yard line. Tom Suski, 0 of 2 so far in this game, looking for that first completion. And both of those throws have been deep balls, neither one within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Kurde Roberts is Western's leading receiver, 32 catches. And an offsides call on the kickoff. Late announcement. Offsides on Aaron Jackson. That boosts Eastern's field position, or I should say Western's field position, another five yards. Roberts has 32 catches for the Mustangs. Evan Beebe with 22, and Elijah Jones with 20. Shotgun ball on the left hash for the Mustangs. Three receivers for Tomaszewski. Read option keeper right through the middle goes Tomaszewski across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Sean Landers and Jalen Harrison bring him down. And Archimus Baskerville now in at running back. The third different halfback we've seen for Frank Tristan's offense so far this evening.
Shotgun again. Thomas Uzi gives it to Baskerville. Right side gets the 44. He stopped a yard short and of the first down. And a big third and one coming up here late in the first quarter. I know we haven't, uh, we have mentioned, you know, just how the, the Mustangs have struggled running the football. Baskerville's 74 rushing yards against Commerce last week was a individual single high for the Mustangs. Redemption handoff. Baskerville gets back to the line of scrimmage, trying to stretch his way to the marker. Looked to me like he was a little bit short. They are going to spot him half a yard short. And if I'm Western, I'm going for this. And the receiver on the near side, Elijah Jones, agrees with the call. Western will try for the first down. Tomaszewski under center. Quarterback sneak has to be the call. The snap is fumbled, but I think there was a whistle before the snap. I think Haskell Buff might have called a timeout. No, Western did. So Western saves its own bacon with a timeout. And some angry Havelina fans, but I highly doubt that Frank Tristan was just a clairvoyant there and just said, we're going to fumble this. I better call a timeout. But as it is, we'll have another chance to, to try for the first time. I, don't, I think this is a no-brainer at this point. You're Western. Like we said in pregame, you're 0-7. You're on the road. It's fourth down and a foot. What do you have to lose? Just go for the first down. Like you're trying to put yourself in the best spot to win this game. And this is a, a really difficult situation for the Hives to get a stop. I think you go for this 100 times out of 100. I, I totally agree with that, especially when, once you get in between the 40-yard the lines on both sides of the field, where they are in the season and what they need to, to pull out a victory tonight, that's 100% the call. And I, don't mean the call. To, I don't mean to disparage the Western New Mexico players. I'm sure they're out there playing their hearts out, but you're 0-7 you're this season. Like Clearly, in order to win, you have to take some chances and catch some breaks. So, Going forward in a situation like this and trying to pick up the first down might be one of the things that can push this team over the top. They lead right now 7 and 6, 2.30 to go in the first quarter. Wildcat formation on fourth and inches. Roberts goes in motion. Right up the middle goes Bart, goes basketball. He's got a first down as he pushes the pile to the 47 yard line, and that moves the chains. Gain of three yards for the junior halfback. And Western New Mexico keeps the football. Thomas Susie shotgun trips to the near side. The tight end Isaac Crichton in the middle between the two receivers. One receiver right. Hogs showing blitz. Here they come. Pass near side flat for Roberts is nailed immediately by Sean Landis. Let, read that play like a book. And nails Roberts for a four yard loss. And that was all Landis. If he misses that tackle, Roberts gets positive yardage, but the safety was not going to miss the tackle. Yeah, he read Tomaszewski's eyes the entire time, and if you're Landis, you better wrap up when you're uh, going up against Roberts, their top receiver on the season. Shotgun, three receivers. Tomaszewski hand up to basketball. He's got room to the 50, to the 40, breaking free again to the 20, to the 10, chased by Landis, but... Yeah, Baskerville will score. So Arkhamus Baskerville goes 56 yards. The Haas get gashed again. And the Mustangs increase their lead back to seven with an extra point coming up. Ready for the PAT. Low snap. The holder gets it down. And that one sails through from Colin Grady. A man down the 10-yard line after that extra point. It is a Havelina. I think it might be Jalen Harrison. No, my mistake. That is 38 Justin Lofton. And... A trainer quickly coming out to help loft it off the field. With a 119 to go now, the Mustangs lead 14 to 6. And two long rushes, one by Williams, one by Baskerville, between them have totaled 117 yards. You take out those two plays, 
And Western New Mexico has 16 yards of total offense. 116 of yards in the first quarter. Western New Mexico averages 106.7 yards per game running the football this season. So they've, they've more than reached their, their average total here in, in the first 12 minutes of action. And again, this is the same issue the Hogs had last week against Tarleton. Tarleton just gassed them by sending Xavier Turner right through the middle. You spread out that defense and you have the safeties and man coverage on the outside. That puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers to kind of maintain integrity, not get too jumpy, not jump gaps. And if they do jump the right gap, so the back makes one cut and cuts outside and heads upfield. All of a sudden, everyone's playing catch-up. Ready to kick it off. A push that's going to bounce to the 35. Comes right to Williams who goes up the middle. Still going across the 40. Carrying an defender to the 46. And a good return off the push kick by Kyle Williams. And that sets up, sets up Tamuk in kick great field position. They are just 54 yards away from a touchdown. We saw the Javelinas score a touchdown on the last drive starting from their own 44. So we know what they can do with this kind of field and how far they can get and, and how much they can score as well. Detmer in the pistol, three receivers, right tight end and an H-back spot on the right, so that's Hertel. Hand off the middle across the 50 and still bowling over defenders to the 46-yard line. That's Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes, running downhill, picks up nine Chris yards. Barnes, the defensive end, getting a carry and blasting his way for nine yards. So we've seen Tyler Wilson carry the ball, Aaron Dilworth, and now Chris Barnes. If you had, if you had that before the game, I'm going to hop a plane to Vegas. Hand up to Pellerin through the middle. He's got a first down to the 40. Catch right to the 35. Still going to the 30. Kind of strip the ball out as Isaiah Edwards. And Pellerin hangs on. Picks up 15. So to move two runs, 24 yards. They're deep in Mustang territory now. And that might be the last play of the first quarter. The Hogs don't have to run another one. But they have enough time with 20 seconds on the game clock to get a one more snap off. Dilworth and Wilson are the wide men. Two tight ends left side, Hertel and Thomas. Single back as Detmer's under center. Pellerin behind him. Give to Pellerin right through the middle. Trying to push the pile. Gets a couple. To about the 28, and that will be the final play of the first quarter. Big plays in this quarter. Three touchdowns, all of them over 35 yards. But Western New Mexico holds the lead. It's 14 to 6 Mustangs. As we come to the end of the first quarter, we'll take a quick break right here. You are listening to and watching the Havelina Sports Network. Do not go away. Robert H. Welker. 1951 graduate from Sugarland, Texas. The teams switch sides as we prepare to begin the second quarter of this game. 14-6 to six the score in favor of Western New Mexico as the Hogs host the Mustangs here on homecoming. Duke with a second down and eight from the Western 28-yard line. The Mustangs scored first on a 61-yard run by DeAndre Williams. The Hogs responded when Coy Detmer hit Ryan Martinez for a 39-yard touchdown. The Hogs missed the extra point, and Weston responded when Artemis Baskerville went 56 yards. Or I should say Archimus Baskerville went 
56 yards for a touchdown. And extra point good. Mustangs lead by eight. the 30 yard line before he is taken down is Archimus Basketball took that kick at the 25 and then turned around and ran the wrong way for 5 yards before he got headed back in the right direction and took that kick back to the 30 and DeAndre Williams comes back out at half back Three receivers for Western New Mexico. Two men to the right, one man left. Roberts is the slot receiver on the near side right. 
Pistol formation. Thomas Usyk gives it to Andrews. Up the middle is hit by, De by Devontae Williams and dropped after a three-yard gain. Devontae Williams on the tackle for the Hawks. Bob Carey, number 21, DeAndre Williams. Western getting the call in from the sideline. Three receivers with Jones, wide left. Ugo Ezema is the receiver on the wide part of the field to the right, and inside him on the slot is Kurt A. Roberts. Pistol formation again for Tomaszewski and company. Chest high snap. Give to Ant give to Williams. Tries the right side and is brought down to 34. Tackled quickly by Vaughn Taylor. That's a one-yard gain. Third down and six coming up. And out go the big body, Sean Sims and Vaughn Taylor. In comes Stiff, an extra defensive back, and Jamar Davis, who plays nose in these situations. Snap to Tomaszewski. Play fake to Roberts, throwing it near side. A wheel route to Williams way over his head. And that may not the best time to call that play. They threw a wheel route to Williams on the short side of the field. And there was very little room for Tomaszewski to try and fit that ball in. Throwing it out of bounds might have just been the best outcome because he was covered well. And like I said, not a lot of space for Williams to get open anyway. That's the best case scenario for this Javelina defense and defensive coordinator Haskell Buff. Moore about to receive the punt from Grady. Just gets it off, but a good high kick that Moore will take. Let bounce actually inside the 30. It bounces inside the 25 to the 22. And it's down there. So Moore lets it go. The kick down by Isaiah Perez. And with 11.09 to go in the second quarter, the Mustangs lead 14-9 as Tamuk gets the football back. Plenty of production from this Havlin offense so far. They're still trailing in this game. Obviously, the objective right here to try and get that touchdown to put this team in the lead. I'm curious, Nate, how would you go about trying to move this team down the field if you're the offensive coordinator? I think you, you win the way that you've won before. How have you been able to get down the field? The medium plays we've seen with Coy Detmer Jr. finding Thomas, finding Martinez that ended up becoming a 39-yard touchdown. The medium stuff is what always has worked so far this season for the Javelinas, and it's something that they should go back to. And that's what worked last week when this offense was successful. They were hitting a lot of short passes, a lot of out routes or flat routes, passes within about at about the 8 to 10 or 5 to 10 yard range those that became kind of the the bread and butter for this offense last week was just simply using the short passing game to move the ball down the field they've tried deep a couple times it hasn't worked yet I think you keep that kind of in your back pocket I wouldn't give up on the deep passing game yet but I think Detmer 7-12 for 69 yards and a touchdown you can tell by his stats that this team is throwing the ball short a lot and using those kind of nickel and dime completions to move the ball. I think I agree with you. I would continue to use that passing scheme to try and pick up first downs. Hogs. So far in this game, eight first downs. Western New Mexico with four. And 11.09 to go in the second quarter. To move down by five. Nick Pellerin in it halfback. Two receivers right side. Two tight ends left side for Corey Detmer Jr. And Alf Pellerin trying to pick his way through the middle. Burst across the 25 to the 29-yard line. Waylaid by Connor Moat. And a good first down gain sets up second and four. Back to play second down. Pellerin led the team with 52 yards rushing last week against Tarleton. Carr could only manage 32. And now Chris Barnes back in at halfback, gets the carry, runs left side across the 30, and tumbles his way past the line again. That'll move the chains. Number 44, Chris and Barnes on the carry. Nate, I'm sure Western New Mexico saw plenty of tape on the Havlinas, watched a ton of film, came here prepared, probably thought they were prepared for just about everything. I don't think they could have been prepared for Chris Barnes, a defensive end, carrying the ball in the backfield tonight. Or Aaron Dilworth. Uh, taking a carry as well, but you know this this is the kind of uh, experimentation 
if you're Kingsville, when you are, you know, you haven't been able to win a, a, a conference game yet, this is the experimentation that you, you take part in to try and get on the board. Single back to Emmerhan up to Barnes again. Crashing across the 35 is thrown down across the 38-yard line by James Lee. If the Hans are picking up this kind of yardage with Chris Barnes in the backfield, they're going to go to him all night long. They have not had a big back like Barnes this season or last season. Even the tough runners they had like Luis Lopez, the guy who ran with his pads low, was tough to bring down, did not have the size that Chris Barnes has. Listed at 6'2", 230. That's a load for any linebacker in this league. Three men in the backfield, including Detmer. Pistol formation, hand up to Pellerin. Left side across the 40. Breaks through across the 50. Left side line 40. To the 30. To the 20. Nick Pellerin. Touchdown, Havelinas. Our third long touchdown play of the night. A 62-yard burst from Nick Pellerin. And this is why you keep running the football as much as you can against this Mustang defense because sooner or later they will have a breaking point and Nick Pellerin was able to break one. At, the, at this rate, these defenses are going to be exhausted come fourth quarter. We're trying to tackle these running backs because both of these teams have shown plenty of depth at the halfback spot. PAT from De La Garza, Rosalina to hold. Good snap, Rosen, he gets it down. De La Garza gets it up and gets it through. 9.19 to go in the second quarter. The score, the Hogs 16, the Mustangs 14. Four touchdowns all over 35 yards. Nick Curran from 62 yards out. That's his second longest run of the season. And this game has been nothing if not exciting through the first 20 plus minutes. Not really sure how this game is going to go for the next oh two and a half quarters or two and three quarters of a, of a football game but we've seen the Javelinas fall behind by eight points and all of a sudden make a comeback by scoring uh, the last ten points uh, in this game but you know this is the kind of game you'll get between teams who might try something that they probably haven't tried you know since week one or since the beginning of the season they're going to be a lot more uh, willing to, to take chances. And this is the kind of game that these fans came out hoping to see. A game that was came with plenty of excitement. The last three weeks, the Hogs have scored 21, 14, and 7 points. The last three weeks, the Mustangs have scored 7, 9, and 0. We've had 30 points between these two teams in 20 minutes and 41 seconds. So both of these offenses with a chance to have some fun for the first time in a while. De La Garza with a pooch kick, middle of the field, left side bounce at the, at the 28 yard line, taken by Baskerville around the 30, pushing a pile ahead to the 35, and he is finally brought down there. Short return by Arkhamus Baskerville, but decent field position for Western New Mexico. Just a quick note here, something I noticed before. Most kickers on these kickoffs do what De La Garza just did. You kick it off, you go down and try to help your team cover the kick, then you go back, get your tee, head off the field. For Colin Grady, he kicks it off, helps his team cover the kick, then gets the tee and throws it to the sideline. You see it's Stanley with the play a linebacker. So one kicker with a much easier night than the other, at least thus far. Pistol formation, three receivers right, and flags fly in every direction. This will be a false start on the Mustangs. official not wanting to leave anyone out. He called both Crichton and Moana for the false start. It'll be first and 15. Tomaszewski pistol once again. Three receivers near side right. Ball on the left hash. And now turns to the sideline to get the call on, which gives me an opportunity to let you know that it is DeAndre Williams in the backfield behind Tomaszewski. And he is still looking for his first completion for positive yardage tonight. Hand off Williams up the middle. Gets stacked up quickly and dropped after a gain of maybe half a yard. The 21 on the carry. Not ready, Williams. On a 
the Roberts and Elijah Jones, the two receivers heading to the far side of the field with Ezema on the near side. Now Roberts comes in motion to the right side. Play fake to Williams throwing near side right. Pass is dropped by Crichton. Thomas Zussi certainly didn't make it easy for him, but the pass is incomplete. Third down and long. That ball was a little bit too high for a guy who was not covered very tightly. Crichton probably had a first down if he makes that catch in stride. Third and long, four receivers for Thomas Zuschke back to throw under pressure. Rolling right, being chased by Davis, and it's tripped up from behind by Brandon Jones. On the coverage for the Hawks, number 37, Jamar Davis. For Jones, that gives him three and a half sacks on the season. And it was pick your poison there for Thomas Zuschke. He's either going to get tripped up by Jones or buried by Davis. It was Jones who got to him first. And now Donovan Moore, the dangerous punt return man, back to receive this kick from Grady. The Hogs were close to blocking the last one, and they blocked one for a TD against Angelo in a similar situation to where Weston is right now. Snap to Grady. Here comes the rush. He gets it off. And a high short kick that bounces at the Havilena 40 and skitters out of bounds at around the 34. That's a 38-yard punt for Grady. And Tamuka begins to drive once again with decent field position. 7.48 to go in the first half. The Hogs lead 16 to 14. An illegal formation, and the Hogs are going to make Grady kick it again. And there are two factors that go into this. A, for the Hogs, you get one more shot at blocking it. And B, you give Moore maybe a better chance to get off a big return, which we saw him have against Western Oregon. He ran one back 61 yards. So now with the spot of the ball moved to the 17, Grady will be inside his own five when he catches this snap. And Moore will stand around his own 45, hoping for... A chance at a run back. And Tamuk wants to block this kick. They're bringing everybody. Snap to Grady. Here they come. And Grady gets it away. He falls down, but there's no flag. Ball bounces to Moore at the 36 right side. Cuts right side towards the side. And stays on his feet. Cuts back. Now a little shoulder shake. And is able to squeeze his way to the 43. About a six yard return. So a short return, but the Hogs gain about 10 yards of field position, so certainly worth taking the flag and forcing the re-kick. Tamuk with 219 yards of total offense so far in this game, over 31 plays. 150 of those on the ground. Both Carr and Pellerin in the backfield. Pellerin is the deep back in the pistol. Three receivers. Coming in motion is Connor Perkins. They give it to Pellerin up the middle. Tries the right side of the line Pellerin and gets about a yard. to about the 42. Lost a yard, right I think. And second down. Tumuk looking to build on a two-point lead as we tick down towards seven minutes to go until halftime. Hogs will get the second half kickoff. A single back, Pellerin behind Detmer. Hand up to Pellerin. Up the middle is pushed across the 45 to the 46 on the tackle by Lee. Four-yard run and third down. Coming up for Tumuk, third down and call it six. You wonder just what the energy level is with this Mustang defense. They've been pounded by Barnes, pounded by Dilworth. We've seen Pelburn bust one for uh, a touchdown. Carr has gotten a lot of carries as well. Uh, what's their energy level? How much of it do they have? Are they looking towards that clock and, and halftime and, and how long it'll take to get into that locker room? Double battle shotgun. Snap to Detmer late. The play is alive. And Detmer throws it downfield for Wilson who's got it. For a first down. 
or at least very close to him. But what a wacky play that was. The ball was snapped to Demmer early, who didn't react for a minute as if the play just had been blown dead. Then picked it up, rolled right through for Wilson, who is marked about half a yard short of the first down. I know we talked about play experimentation, but I don't think that was in the play. You don't think they went over that in practice? Probably not. And now the Haas want to go for this. They're bringing in Barnes and saying, we're going to give it to our big guy. We dare you to stop us. The spot of the ball is the Western 48. Their officials might want to measure this as they were having a discussion around the spot of the football. And the referee confers with the line judge. And they do indeed call for the measurement. We have 6.05 to go. 16-14 Havelinas as we are getting closer and closer to halftime here on homecoming and throwback weekend in Kingsville. Hogs donning their throwback jerseys and here comes the chain gang to measure. And the Hogs might have this. They do. Initially spotted short, but Wilson had just enough for a fresh set of downs. And instead of, ha instead of having to sweat out a fourth down and inches, the Hogs can go back to running their normal offense. And that's bad news for, for Chris Barnes, who has to head off the field. But Detmer is back under center. Pelerin the deep man, single back, three tight ends left. Pitts Pelerin left side. Cuts upfield to the 45. Is tackled from side. behind by Connor Moat. A four-yard run for Pellerin. And a good first down play for Tamuk. Second down and six. And Hogs would be wise to keep plugging away with that running in. They're averaging 7.2 yards per carry. Wide right is Tyler Wilson. Tight ends to the right side as well. Pitch right for Pellerin. Hat might have a seam. Just to cut up field to the sideline. Fights the defender as he's thrown out of bounds at around the 41. And some extra chatter going on on the Havelina sideline as Matthew Macon rode Pellerin out of bounds. That's a gain of five. Third down and short. He's up third down, about two. Looking to get to the 38. They are at the 40. Ball on the hash on the right side, on the far side of the field as the Hogs go from right to left. For those of you listening on KTAI, man in motion, that's Dilworth to the left side. Back to pass Detmer, near side for Dilworth behind him. Incomplete, Dilworth was wide open in first down territory, but Detmer's throw was early and behind him. Dilworth hadn't even turned to catch it, even even. Even if he had, the ball was a couple of yards behind him. He wouldn't have had a chance to make the grab. And Delagar's at a punt. Back receive the punt for the Mustangs. And Roberts to receive the punt. He stands at his own 10. Snap to Delagarza. There's a coffin corner to the left side. Roberts backing up, but Armstrong's inside the five. Ball bounces to the one. Trying to save it is Keyshawn Rowe. Armstrong dives in. I think the ball made it to the goal line, however. The field judge says no. It was kept out of the end zone. So that scrum around the one somehow kept the ball from breaking the plane of the goal line. The field judge was right there. He said it was down at the one. There were about four heavily. You think they were trying to dive on a fumble the way they were trying to cover that ball. But mission accomplished. You wonder like where, how that ball bounced into the air, if it broke the plane. Obviously from our vantage point, we weren't able to tell for sure, but it was up there and you just saw Havelina players trying to bring that ball back down to gravity, back down to the earth. Yeah, both Rowe and Armstrong were in the perfect position to keep that ball from hanging into the end zone with some help from their friends. They managed to do that. Armstrong has been one of the aces for this squad on special teams all year. The main special teams guys have been Alan Smith, Jacob Armstrong, Brent Turpel have seemingly been in on every punt or on every tackle and a kickoff. 
and Armstrong showing his prowess from that spot once again. And Armstrong has seen plenty of action on offense this season, but special teams where he has made his mark as an impact player for this club, and that's been the story of his season from start until now. The ball is spotted inside the one on the near side of the field, which is the right side. And now this puts Western in a really tough spot. If I'm the Hogs, I'm stacking up that line because you know they're not going to come out and throw the ball with Tom Mazuski with the ball on the one-yard line to start. My goal is stop him on first down, force him into second and third and long, where you got a quarterback who has not thrown the ball much, who is one of five for negative four yards throwing from out of his own end zone. Tom Mazuski with two runners in the backfield. Or I should say a full house backfield with three halfbacks. And a movement in the backfield by basketball. That'll be the one of the least consequential penalties ever enforced. Basketball just started a little bit early. And now the officials wanted to decide. They're trying to decide whether or not basketball might have been drawn off. I didn't see any movement by the Javelinas. Because that was a clear false start. Baskerville kind of shuddered and took a step and fell forward. And actually they get Moana, his second false start of the night. But penalty that won't mean very much. Instead of first and ten, it's first and ten and a half, say. So Baskerville, Harris, and I believe DeAndre Williams. No, that's, that is not Williams. Vincent Brown in the backfield with Tom Azuski. With Victor Harris, now flags fly again. Flag hey, this was a false start. It's a very late false start call. That's also, like I said before, a pretty meaningless one. And they call the Hogs for calling signals on defense to try and disrupt the offense. They didn't name a single player. And Haskell Buff with his palms to the sky in response to that call. But boy, is that an annoying penalty for the Havilland. You have him back up to the one. Now they have some breathing room at the six. Still a full house backfield for the Mustangs. Now Valentine jumps off sides, free play. Tomaszewski, deep ball, left side, picked off by Jackson, but it won't mean anything. Smart play by Tomaszewski just to try and hit the deep ball. That's the second time Valentine's been drawn off in this game. And the Hawks have had issues with that all season long with guys on defense jumping the snap count. Now the yardage shouldn't result in a first down because Western had a false start that should have backed him up about half a yard and then you give him five and five. It should be, now it's a, maybe it's a moot point. It should be, I guess it would be first down and half a yard, but as it is, it's first and ten. But the Hogs, with just two bad penalties to give Western a free first down. That was just to keep himself Runs right side and is brought down at the 14. Three-yard run. Two, no other word for it, two bonehead penalties. You have Western backed up inside the one. You give them two fouls for five yards, and now they're moved out to the 11 for first down. And they have the ball now second and seventh at the 14. Just two inexcusable flags against the blue and gold. Still three runners in the backfield with Tom Azuski. Read auction. Keeper. Thomas Juski bringing the flat four. Archimist Baskerville who fights through some tacklers and gets to the 19. Looks like looked like the Hogs had him for a loss. But Baskerville moves it Baskerville. within a couple of yards of a first down. And for that, for that uh, offside on Caleb Valentine, that was a free play for Thomas Juski who ended up throwing an interception. It was nullified. You know, last week he would have had three interceptions had 
one of those counted, but that was but that was nullified on a penalty against Texas A&M Commerce. So it would have been three picks for Tomaszewski last week, but he only finished the game with two. Three men, three receivers for Tomaszewski pistol formation. Hand up to Harris through the middle. Has room across the 20. Left side, 25 to the 30. Heading to, towards the sideline to the 35. And Harris moves the change to the 37-yard line. A 19-yard run for right Justin now, Harris. And even if Western does not score here, the Mustangs have totally flipped field position on the Javelinas. Pistol. And off Harris tries the right side run down the backfield. Tackled the 36 for a yard loss by Tremichael Tut. Tut, the second leading tackler on this team, coming in with 55 stops. And give him seven and a half tackles for a loss on the season as well now. WNMU moving quickly. Snap to Tomaszewski. Looking deep. Left side. Jackson against. Jones, but the pass falls incomplete. Elijah Jones falls incomplete. Brings up third and 12. Second time the Mustangs have tried that. Just a one-on-one -on -one jump ball down the field. Tomaszewski still just two of seven in this game for zero yards. Same three receivers set. Third and 12. Three-man rush. Plenty of time for Tom Zuski. Near side. Pass caught. That should be a first down to Evan Beebe. And indeed, that is a fresh set of downs for the Mustangs. Simple comeback route. And Beebe caught the ball in front of Jordan Seminot for a first down. DB by himself near side. Now Roberts comes in motion. Tomaszewski play fake to Harris. Under pressure, gets sacked. And now a flag is thrown. On the bottom number three, Caleb Valentine. Also by, I believe, the umpire. Flag on the play. By virtue of when and where the flag was thrown, I have to imagine this is a face mask or roughing the passer. But there were two other officials right on that play who did not make this call. Have to see the replay. And according to the referee, now it's against Western. They get the center Timoteo for holding this a no-brainer to, de to decline this foul. And that was Brandon Jones and Caleb Valentine in there for the sack. Second and 16. 154 to go until halftime. 16-14 Havelinas. Ball in the near hash. Thomas Uzi looking towards the sideline to get the call. BB again. Single receiver right side. Slot left is Roberts. Wide left is Elijah Jones. Play fake to Harris. Pressure coming again. Here comes Valentine. Thomas Uzi fumbles the ball and it rolls out of bounds. Now the head coach Tristan wants a personal foul on Valentine for hitting Tomaszewski, knocking him out of bounds. There was no call. I don't believe it'll be a sack for Valentine, but it is a loss of yardage for the Mustangs. He's a third down and 21. One thing we've seen with this Havelina defense is when you get pressure on Tomaszewski, for Tomaszewski, bad things start to happen. You know, he's He's taking sacks, and sometimes the ball just, as we saw in that previous play, just squirting out of his hands, and fortunately it went out of bounds, but, you know, the more pressure they get on number 19, the better. Third and 21. Tomaszewski looking for a screen over the middle, caught by Harris, dragged down from behind by Valentine after a five-yard gain, and Darren Wilkinson racing out of the field to call timeout with 105 to go. Smart decision by Wilkinson. His offense still has two timeouts to work with now. They'll have plenty of time with 65 seconds on the clock to drive down, down the field. But back to your point, which you're making it, you're right. Hawks have done a good job, first of all, getting pressure on Thomas Zuski. And Thomas Zuski has not looked cool, calm, and collected when the rushers have been in on him when he's been back in the pocket. 
And the official announcement, that's the first charge timeout. Thomas Zuschke, 4 of 9 for 17 yards in this game. Compare that to Corey Detmer Jr., 8 of 14, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Thomas Zuschke's been sacked twice. Detmer once. Jones with a sack and a half in this game for the Javelinas. And the Hogs still looking for their first turnover of the night. 16-14 is our score with 105 to go before halftime. The Hogs will get the second half kickoff. And the Hogs will send out their punt team. We'll see if they have another punt block on as Donovan Moore will go back to receive this kick undoubtedly. This special teams unit headed up by Kevin May. And for the Haas all year, it's been some good, some bad between their, their issues with long snapping and in the kicking game, as well as some highlights from Sean Landes and Donovan Moore returning punts. And Moore back to receive this kick from Colin Grady. Four punts, an average of 43 yards for Grady, his longest a 43 yarder. And my partner Nate Cortese doing his best to fend off the bugs that have invaded our booth tonight. Hogs showing a block now. Western changes up their blocking formation. Ready to punt. Here comes the rush. Line drive kick. He just gets it off through the rush. It bounces to about the 25. Moore races, grabs at the 30. Is tripped up and dropped at the 31. Moore tried to grab that and run with a full head of steam. But he got tripped as he was first grabbing the football. 55 seconds remaining in the half. Two timeouts for Corey Detmer Jr. And this offense. Armstrong, Wilson, Thomas, and Dilworth are the men split out. Thomas and Dilworth right side, Wilson and Armstrong near side. Thomas and Armstrong are the slot men. Pistol formation with Jeff Carr. Two down linemen for Western New Mexico. Detmer, blitz coming, throws left for Wilson. Looks like he cut it around the marker. No, the field judge says it was incomplete. Pass complete to number 88, Wilson. Oh, actually, no, they're gonna say it was complete. I could have sworn the field judge said incomplete, but he might have gotten overruled. It's a nine yard gain. Clock running. Detmer to throw again. Pressure coming. Throws it right side for Torrey Thomas. That's going to fall incomplete, which is not the worst thing in the world for the Hogs. It stops the clock with 32 seconds to go. And with it third and one here, Nate, I would run the ball, get my first down, run up, because you don't have far to go, run up and spike it, and then you stop the clock and you get a fresh set of downs. You don't have to worry about having to punt here. And by the time you get there, there might be 25... 24 seconds left in the quarter. I think there'll be more than that because they won't have far to go. Like I said, Detmer to throw. Left side, pass off the hands of Torrey Thomas was almost picked off. As Nolan Grigsby was in coverage there, almost jumped that route and would have had an open road to the end zone. But the Hobbs go three and out after receiving that punt and De La Garza to boot it. And that's why, in my opinion, you run the ball because you run it. You're right. Okay, maybe you have 25 seconds because, like you said, the play's going to take a few seconds and the clock will stop and you can spike it as soon as they reset the chains because you'll already be on, be on the ball, basically. But at least you get to keep it and get a couple more downs. So the guards are to kick. Line drive kick near side will bounce to 25. Hits Jacob Armstrong. Now is picked up by Roberts and he is tackled to the 28-yard line by Armstrong with 18 Roberts. seconds to go. But I'd expect the Mustangs to simply take a knee or just run the ball once and head to the locker room. And Tom Azuski, who does have a couple timeouts, probably coming out for just one snap. I don't think Western trusts him to throw the team into field goal range. 
with this little time remaining in the half. And Tomaszewski will throw. Valentine coming on the rush. Tomaszewski is sacked. Another take 10 for Caleb Valentine. He's saying thank you very much, Western, for running one more play. And now I think the Hogs call the timeout. With eight seconds left, the clock is stopped. It looked to me like the Hogs were signaling timeout. Okay, so a sideline warning. I don't think that'll stop the clock from running out. And there's the referee starting the clock with six seconds to go. Thomas Uzi looks like he wants to snap it one more time. I don't know why. Only bad things can happen. And the clock runs out. And Thomas Uzi still acting like he thought he had time. Maybe he didn't know the clock was going to start. But regardless, that's the end of the half. DeAndre Williams is still out on the field bewildered. But 30 minutes are in the book. Are in the books. The score is the Havelina 16 and Western New Mexico 14. We'll be right back. We'll take a quick break. Be right back to go over everything that happened in the first half here in Havelina Stadium. We'll have all that and more. We'll take you around the Lone Star Conference as well. You're listening to KTAI and watching the Havelina Sports Network. Don't go away. We'll be back in a moment. Listening to KTAI and watching the Havlina Sports Network. Don't go away. We'll be back in a moment.
Carmelita Band. For tonight's hot time entertainment, the Brothers of Texas, your Carmelitas, your 2018 Carmelita Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Dr. Jimmy Keeley and Professor Edward Moncada. Halftime back at Havelina Stadium. The Hogs lead the Western New Mexico Mustangs by a score of 16 to 14. Mark and Sarah alongside Nate Cortiso and Nate. A first half full of offense here at Pepsi Field. Through 30 minutes, 157 total yards for the Mustangs. For the Hawks, 246 total yards, over 100 yards rushing for Nick Pellerin. Two long touchdown runs for Western New Mexico. Both offenses have taken advantage of the opportunities that have presented themselves. So far tonight, we have 30 points to show for it. This has been the breath of fresh air for both offenses uh, tonight. And as you mentioned in the first half, how will the defenses for both the Javelinas and the Mustangs feel, say, in the fourth quarter uh, if this game is still close? Who will have the enough energy uh, late in this game to close this one out will be the thing to look for. Yeah, you're exactly right. The biggest story in the second half is going to be the adjustments the defenses can make over the course of the, right now for those final 30 minutes because the Hogs, again, we talked about in the first half, their biggest problem has been the same thing that plagued them last week against Tarleton, simply getting gashed by running backs going through the heart of this defense up the middle for long runs. Both Williams and Baskerville went right basically down the middle of the field, down the hash marks for both of their touchdown runs. The Hawks may have to do something differently, whether it's keeping a deep safety back or just changing the scheme they're playing, maybe the, the zone defense or whatever type of plays that they are running on defense going to have to do something differently because you can't just allow Western to almost have that ace in the back of their pocket but okay we'll run this play and we'll get 20-30 yards Back at Havelina Stadium, it is halftime. Western New Mexico trailing the Havelinas by a score of 16 to 14. Nate Cortizo alongside myself, Mark in Sarah, as I mentioned before the break, plenty of other action around the Lone Star Conference this evening. Four other games took place today. Two of them are over. Two are ongoing. Both of those in the second quarter. And we'll start with the two that already finished up. West Texas. The team the Havelinas will be visiting next week in Canyon. They were defeated by Texas A&M Commerce in Commerce today by a score of 41 to 16. So Commerce picks up their seventh win there, seven and two. West Texas falls to five and four. They've lost two in a row and a little bit of a fall from grace for a team that was receiving votes nationally earlier in the season. Kane and Wilson getting the started quarterback for Commerce, Commerce, but Ovi Erevbu, the story, 118 yards rushing on 20 carries for the Lions, who run up over 40 points. This game was 
14-13 in favor of Commerce in the second quarter, but the Lions ran away by scoring 35 of the final, or check that, make that 27 of the final 30 points in this game to win by a score of 41 to 16. And the other game that has gone final, Angelo State all over Adams State in a non-conference meeting, 59 to 20. Angelo led this game at the half by a score of 45 to nothing and never looked back. The final 20 points of the game scored by Adam State making the final score look just a little bit more respectable for the visitors but the Randbells running away with that one they move to 5 and 4 and jump above 500 they'll have a chance to get excuse me above 500 next week as they are 3 and 3 in conference and next week the Randbells will be hosting Eastern New Mexico on the, on their senior day make that the Rams excuse me just hitting halftime are MSU Texas, the number 10 team in the nation, and the number 8 team in the nation, the Tarleton State Texans. MSU at home leads 21 to 13. And they score the last two touchdowns before that game hit halftime to jump ahead by eight points. Touchdown, pass, touchdown run by Leighton Rab, and then one by Vincent Johnson gives MSU Texas an eight point lead. That game, as I mentioned, just hitting halftime. And with 9.02 to go in the second quarter, Eastern New Mexico ahead of UT Permian Basin by a score of 10 to nothing. 125 yards rushing so far for Eastern New Mexico. They have held. Lone Star Conference win. Western New Mexico look also looking for their first LSC win. They are 0-7. And we're here to talk to you about And WNMU trying to get their offense jump started once again in the second half. But their defense will have to do the job first. And they have had a tough time all night trying to slow down this Hogs offense. And Cordette Emmer Jr. will try and continue that trend second half about to begin. Detmer in this game, 9 of 17 for 84 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Tom Mazuski for Western New Mexico, 4 of 9 for 17 yards. The big yards being in for both teams on the ground, 140 yards rushing for WNMU, 162 for Tamuk. The Hawks averaging 7 yards per rush. Western New Mexico averaging 6.4. Aaron Jackson and Jeff Carr will go back to return this kickoff. Third quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by Emerald Beach Hotel. Corpus Christi's only waterfront. Carr averaging 19 Emerald yards Hotel per return this season on 16 runbacks. Second half kickoff is brought to you by Embroidery with locations at 230 East King and Kingsville. And here is Grady to kick it off. South Padre Island Drive. And the Hogs were prepping themselves for a possible pooch kick. Kevin May was just tossing high floating foot in preparation for a pooch kick possibly coming his way. But an onside kick can't be ruled out too. Kyle Williams with the only kick return tonight for the Hogs. He ran it back 12 yards. Graded to kick it off. Gets the all ready from his special teams unit. Pooch kick near side towards the sideline. Clarkson catches it out of bounds. And the flag comes in. Smart play by Clarkson who caught it with a foot out of bounds. But I think he probably caught it right around where the penalty would put the ball at anyway. In which case if you're the Hawks you can just decline the penalty. You know, for Clarkson, we saw him, you know, just before halftime practicing mock uh, pooch kicks uh, into the air, and he was uh, able to catch uh, every single one of them. Ball was caught, the player's foot out of bounds. That is my rule. 
free kick out of bounds. Five yard penalty will be added on to the end of the kick. First down. So since Clarkson caught it at the 35, instead of giving the Hogs the ball at the 35, they tack on five yards. That's pretty smart. Kudos to whoever made that rule. Shotgun ball on the right hash. Haas going from left to right. Three receivers left side. Detmer to throw. Looking long on the first play. Over the middle. Caught by Wilson at the 40. Breaking free to the 30. A flag gets thrown. Wilson is hauled down inside the 20. Will check the flag. It was thrown by the side judge in the secondary. And Detmer standing right by the marker. It is on Western New Mexico. So count the gain. It's a gain of 42. On the tackle for the Mustangs, number 22, Eric Dorsey. And not a bad way to get Wilson involved, his third catch of the night. And the Hogs come right out of the shoot, gunning for a big play. They get it. They're in the red zone. The Avalanches are now inside the Macarena Science.com red zone. Aaron Dilworth wide right, wide left is Wilson. I formation. Detmer fumbles the snap and falls on it for about a yard loss. And the quarterback might have been a little too anxious to get out from under center. Could have Second been a, and 11. It, it could have been a very uh, dangerous situation, Mark. You know, we talked about how important it was to get this second half kickoff for the Javelinas and march down the field. They had that first big play. They know they're inside the 20, and Detmer was a little bit jittery on that first drive. Barnes in the backfield now motions out left through empty backfield for Detmer one hand to grab the snap has wide open hurts out the five touchdown Havelinas the easiest oh, yeah. touchdown pass Coy Detmer will ever throw Hertel just strolled into the middle of the field there wasn't a purple jersey in sight Detmer hit him at the five and he trotted across for his first Havelina touchdown and the Hogs in front by eight. The Mustangs brought the house, but credit to Detmer Jr. for looking downfield and finding his senior tight end in Hertel. Extra point is up. PAT zips through. And with 14.09 to go, it took the Hans just 51 seconds to add to their lead. They're up by nine. It's 23 to 14. Looking at the replay on that touchdown, as they call Weston for offsides, penalty declined, kick obviously good. There was a blitzer coming off the left side who was set up basically right over Hertel, but he paid Hertel no mind. And smart play by Detmer, who just threw it to the tight end. And actually, credit to Darren Wilkinson, great play design. So the Hogs had a five-man line but Hertel was basically the tackle on the right side the normal left tackle the normal right tackle Justin Johnson was set up set up out wide in front of Chris Barnes so Western just looked at it as a five-man line and when the right tackle heads into the secondary you don't usually pay attention to that guy so Denver only had four guys in front of him but Hertel was an eligible receiver at the tight end, heads out downfield, and all of a sudden you're kind of putting West in a situation where they're not used to defending this weird formation, and it worked for a touchdown. De La Garza kicks it off, the kickoff drifting to the right side. Justin Harris takes it at the goal, and he's going to run it out. Cutting towards the middle of the field to 10. Still going left, and there's Brent Hertel. Doing it all tonight. Catches the touchdown, goes right back, makes the tackle on the kickoff. First and 10 Mustang. First and 10 for Western New Mexico at the 15 yard line. So a really wise play design by Darren Wilkinson. Putting Western in a situation they're totally unfamiliar with how to defend and it worked for a touchdown. And Hertel catches his first touchdown the same that Ryan Martinez catches his first TD. Tomaszewski pitch right side. And running around the right side, getting corralled by Peyton Hendricks after a short gain is Curday Roberts. And Hendricks, the leading tackler on this team, a ferocious hitter at safety. Roberts the former the Texas Tech Red Raider. Down by number 23, Second and nine. Three receivers. 
two men in the backfield. Tom Mazuski hands it off up the middle. Goes Harris to the 20. That'll be a four-yard gain set up third down. And now whistles actually make that Williams on the carry. And the head linesman blowing the whistle. It is not a first down. For the Huggies, number 94, Sean Sims. But the clock is stopped. And now both teams get a sideline warning. And now another quarterback, Peyton Kendrick, comes in. And Tom Mazuski heads to the sideline. How often do you see this? Third and five. So a Hendrick, or Kendrick with a chance to try and convert on third and manageable. Back to throw. Kendrick looking over the middle. Has Roberts through his hands incomplete. A little bit high. But Kendrick threw that, threw that pass with as, much, with as much authority as Tom Mazuski's thrown any ball all night. I was just about to uh, point that out because, you know, there was, a, there was a little bit more zip and there wasn't a whole lot of air under that throw from, from Peyton. We had Peyton Kendrick at quarterback on that play and Peyton Hendricks at safety for the Javelinas. That's going to be Fourth fun and for five. You to say today. Say that again? That's going to be fun for you to say the rest of the sure, night. Sure, I'm sure I won't get them confused. <laughs> and Grady with the punt. Here comes the rush, but he gets it off. Short kick, Landis. Fair catch at the 48. Great field position for the Hives who go right back to work on offense. And more good field position for Detmer. For this Mustang defense, this is the danger zone. You're, you're already in, on your second defensive possession in just over two minutes of the... Of the
Right, Tristan is going to trust to try and lead this offense. I think that continues on with the trend of tonight for both teams. You know, you're trying to find the right mix of players and calling the right mix of plays to get your offense moving and in a Mustangs case to get them their first win of this season. And it appears Kendrick might be the person that would give them the best chance to do so. I mean, just going back to what we talked about pregame, both of these teams are just desperate for a win. For the Haas, they've lost three straight. It's homecoming. They want to be able to celebrate homecoming with a win. For Western, they're 0-7. They haven't won a game since their final game of last season. They feel like this is a winnable game. They're within nine points, which is a lot closer than they were at this point either of the last three weeks. So both of these teams just to say, hey, what do we have to lose? We're going to put whoever we need to put on the field to give us the best chance to win. We're going to run whatever plays we need to try and win this football game, whether that means handing the ball to a defensive end or bringing in our number three quarterback. So both of these teams just desperate for a win. And it's amazing what you'll do when you're just trying to get a W into the record books. Domazuski back to run this offense. And three receivers at his disposal with a running back to his right in the shotgun. And a flag is thrown on the far side. It'll be a false start. And they get Keeney Makanoale with the false start. I believe that's the fourth false start against Western New Mexico tonight. Penalties have not been a huge issue for either team, but they've been there. Seven for 65 against Tamuk. Make that four for 15 now. So make that only the third false start against Western. Thomas Houston keeps it on a reaction. Runs left. He will get nothing. Brandon Jones was on him the whole way. Threw him down for a five-yard loss. Thomas Houston was never going to outrun the former All-American defensive end. And Jones now has to get his cleat back on his foot. And he's ready to go. I'm surprised we haven't seen Paul Hansen, the offensive coordinator, or Frank Tristan go to Blaine Armstrong. We've seen a little bit of Kendrick. We've seen Tomaszewski for the lion's share of this game. But I'm curious as to why we haven't seen Armstrong tonight. Kendrick is back in a QB shotgun. We have to hand up to Harris. He is slung down in the backfield. Caleb Valentine knifing through for the tackle for a loss. And both of Kingsville's outstanding defensive ends come through on consecutive plays. And what was first and 10 at the, tw at the 30 becomes third down and 25 from the 20. So it was first and 10 at the 35. And now they lose 15 yards on consecutive plays, third and forever. Four receivers for Peyton Kendrick. And if you're the Hogs, just drop everybody. No one should get behind anybody. Play fake to Harris. Thomas Uski over the middle to no one in particular. Roberts wants a flag, and here one comes from deep in the offensive backfield. Or no, they're gonna get they're gonna that was the head linesman who threw it. They're gonna get the Hogs for pass interference. Is that Jackson again? I don't think so, but let's get the call. I think it might have been one of the linebackers.
And that's Jermichael Tut. The middle linebacker looking at the replay. Tut wasn't anywhere near where that ball landed. Maybe they meant 33 Nick Stiff. The guy that looked like they might have gotten the call for was 12 Sean Landis. I don't know where they got 34 from, but it's first and 10. Pey Peyton Hendricks pitching le or Kendrick pitching it left side on an option for no gain. We're on that time by DeAndre Williams. Second down and 10. So at this point in the game, I think Caleb Valentine has three and a half tackles uh, for a loss. Now we get whistles. I think the Hogs jumped off sides. And this game is on track to set a record, I'm sure, for pre-snap penalties. Between the Hogs jumping off sides and getting called for calling false signals on defense and Western false starting. There has certainly been plenty of excitement, but it has not been without sloppy moments. And they get Titus Timoteo for the illegal snap. So Chris Jordan Olafala and Tony Harper are the only offensive linemen to escape the yellow flag tonight. But still 23 minutes to play in this game. You never know. Plenty of time for them to join the fun. Kendrick shotgun, three receivers, second and 15. Four down linemen for Tamuk. Play fake for Williams, throws it over the middle. Pass is incomplete, but another flag's coming on Aaron Jackson. Pass intended for Elijah Jones. Jackson clearly grabbed the back of Jones' jersey. I don't know why Jackson is complaining. That was blatant pass interference. And that'll be the third flag on Jackson this evening. We have not seen much of Brajon Crenshaw tonight, one of Timuk's other corners. Crenshaw got beat up pretty good last week by Tarleton. And I don't know if that has anything to do with him not playing tonight, but we've not seen a lot of him. This country back to throw. Throws it left side, incomplete, and another flag is thrown. I think they're going to get Jackson again. I know another flag gets thrown by the headlines when you're the sidelines. And the fans here at Havlina Stadium, none too pleased. And we'll have a few more moments with the men in the black and white stripes. And just mentioned Brajon Crenshaw. He comes on. Jackson comes off. And Jackson immediately met by Darren Wilkinson. And Wilkinson not having any of Jackson's explanation on the sideline. You'd love to have a window into that conversation. Although probably not while we're on the air. And Jackson now discussing it. I'm sure with his position coach Eddie Moten. And five officials huddling in midfield to determine who these fouls are on. So there was no flag thrown on Aaron Jackson, so he at least is off the hook for that play. The sideline warning and the unsportsmanlike conduct are called. They can only enforce one of those unless I'm mistaken. And a, a bit of a Bronx cheer from the crowd here as if to say finally you called a foul on them, but I, I consider myself a person who can be pretty tough on the officials. I haven't had a problem with any of the calls they've made tonight. The foul was on Elijah Jones, front sportsman-like conduct. Tremichael Tut trying to pump up this home crowd as they back up Western all the way to their own 25. 
And from there, it will be second down and 25. Second down and 25. Kendrick in a shotgun, three receivers. Dimitri Akenton is the man split up near side against Brajon Crenshaw. Williams in the backfield. Roberts comes in motion. Kendrick, play fake. Under pressure, Brandon Jones tries to bring him down. A backwards pitch to Williams, who's across the 30 to the 40. Cuts left to the 45. First down to the 50. To the Tamuk 40. To the Tamuk 35 before he's brought down by Jordan Seminot. And it was a sack instead becomes a 50-yard gain. Brandon Jones had him wrapped up, but what presence of mind by Kendrick to find the running back. And now you're on the other side of the field and you're looking to cut this into a one possession game. Pardon me, make that a 40 yard, and it should be a 40 yard run because it was a lateral to Williams. Giving it left side to Baskerville across the 30, wrapped up by Devontae Williams, a pile up at about the 29. That's a six yard gain and first, second and 25 became first and 10 in a hurry and now the Mustangs knocking on the door of the Tamuk red zone. 7.45 to go in the third in a nine point game. Second and Kendrick down. getting the call in from Blaine Armstrong and company on the sidelines. And a reverse, now a pitch back to Kendrick who's smothered, loses the ball. Brandon Jones has it. It's Havelina football. And Kendrick is still down at the 45. So we've seen these teams try new things all night. And finally, for one of these squads, it blew up in their face. The reverse flea flicker to Kendrick, who had no time, was smothered by Jones as soon as he got the ball, it seemed like, or make that Tremichael Tut was the first guy in, and then Jones fell on the fumble. And give credit to Tut. If you look at the replay, Tut just keyed on Kendrick the entire way. Seemed to make a beeline for the quarterback from the start of the play. And was right there to make the stop as soon as Kendrick got the ball back. And that was Kendrick that was down on the field for, for the Mustangs. He's making his way to the sideline. Appears to be holding an elbow on his, I believe, holding his right arm. He's getting looked at by the trainer. Yeah, you certainly hope that Kendrick is okay. You mentioned this is the first time he's gotten to play this season. You don't want... A kid's first chance to go on the field to be ruined by an injury. Now he got, he took quite a wallop from Tut and company on that play. Ball popped out of Tavalina football. The third loss fumble by these teams in this third quarter. Two for the Mustangs and one for the Hogs. And both Mustang fumbles have come in Havelina territory. So both of those turnovers have short-circuited golden opportunities for the visitors to get back in the game. And Coyt Emmer Jr. throwing, staying loose on the sidelines as the Havlings prepared, prepared to take over on their own 47. Demmer 12 for 21, 150 yards, a pair of touchdowns has not been picked off. And Detmer aiming for what would be just his second game of the season without an INT. He's thrown a touchdown in every game but one as well. Three receivers and two running backs, Pellerin and Carr. Jacob Armstrong is slot left. Dilworth comes in motion towards the line but stays wide left. Detmer to throw. Here comes pressure. Deep ball right side. Has Wilson open at the 20 just out of his reach. Wilson had B. John Cuther beaten. 
Detmer starts just a little bit too long for the junior from Bay City, Texas. There have been a couple of throws Detmer has had, and he has still looked very, very good tonight, but there have been a couple of throws that were just out of the reach of Wilson, as we saw here, that could have gone for bigger plays. And Hogs not afraid to try and hit those deep passes tonight. They've just been a little bit off, it seems, whenever those opportunities have presented themselves. Four receivers, trips left for Detmer. Play fake to Carr, looking over the middle, has Armstrong at the 40, breaks the tackle, 35, still going to the 30, and is pushed down at the 27-yard line. 26-yard hookup. Armstrong, sixth catch of the year. Up the special team all-star taking care of business on offense. Not the only one, Hertel could be put in that same boat tonight. And Tomaszewski warming up with Ramos Fano on the near sideline, both quarterbacks for Western New Mexico. So you might see a new face get some time under center for the Mustangs, but the Hogs want to build this lead even further first. They lead by nine, six and a half to go in the third. Snap to Detmer, looking over the middle, caught by Torrey Thomas at the 15. That'll be another first down. Thomas' Thomas's fourth catch of the night. This is his third game of the season with at least four catches. There are multiple ways that you could go about this if you're Darren Wilkinson. You know that the Mustangs struggle stopping the run, but Darren Wilkinson has been aggressive, aggressive, aggressive since the beginning of the second half. And Detmers has a hot hand. Why go away from him? Two receivers, right pistol formation. Blitz being shown. Western jumps off sides. Hand off right side for Carr. Cuts across the 15 to the 10. Cuts back up to the 5. To the pylon. Touchdown, Javelinas. Jeff Carr cut up field, cut one way, cut back to the right, dove for the goal line, and broke the plane for the score. It appeared the Covered and Carr now each with rushing touchdowns. And the Hogs electing not to go for two to make this a 17 point game. Probably smart to at least make it 16 with 5.54 to go. It appeared the Mustangs jumped early, and you assumed that the, a flag was going to be thrown on that play, but. Credit to Carr for, for keeping with that run. PAT up and good. 5.54 to go in the third quarter. The Hogs leading by 16. 30 to 14 over Western New Mexico. And the Hogs turn the turnover into points, Nate. Marching right down the field. And on their touchdown drives, they have been really efficient. They have just moved like a hot knife through butter right through this Western defense down the field for these scores. Look the last drive, they went 53 yards in four plays. We saw Coy Detmer's a touchdown pass to Brent Hurdle early in this quarter. That was a three-play drive for 51 seconds, and this drive just took 80 seconds off the third quarter clock. So they're trying to beat this Mustang defense into submission. Yeah, here are the Hogs touchdown drives this evening. Four plays, 56 yards in a minute 46. Four plays, 78 yards in a minute 50. Three plays, 60 yards in 51 seconds. And that last one, like Nate just said, Four plays, 53 yards in a minute 20. They're not wasting any time as far as adding touchdowns to their total. Their one field goal drive took nine plays. They also have a 10-play drive that ended with a punt. And now the question is, who is under center, or maybe I should say in the shotgun, for the Mustangs now that they get the ball back? De La Garza boots this one deep. And Justin Harris will elect to take a knee. Mustangs on their own 25 yard line. And hovering around the offensive huddle on the sideline is Ramos Fano. But it will be Gabriel Tomaszewski to lead the offense. Trying to find Peyton Kendrick on the sideline. Don't see him right now. Tomaszewski, read option, handoff. Williams with a little bit of a hip wiggle in the hole. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and ten. And Kendrick may have gone to the locker room for further examination. Into a yard on the play, brings up second and nine. 
Comes to see four receivers trip to the left side. In the backfield with them is DeAndre Williams. Play fake. Pass is bad off the line, incomplete. And then Roberts gets smothered after the ball hit the ground. Third down coming up. And there's a player without pads on who's getting his shoulder wrapped on the sideline. I wonder if that's Peyton Kendrick. Shotgun, three receivers. Thomas Uski to throw again. Steps up in the pocket. Throws short right side off the hands of Williams. He wasn't going to get the first down anyway. And fourth down, the Mustangs will punt a frustrated Kiki Makanoale as the Mustangs head off the field. And I'm pretty sure that is Peyton Kendrick. He's standing right by a helmet that has a number 12 on it. So it would appear Peyton Kendrick's night sadly is done. So Western now down two quarterbacks with no Armstrong and no Kendrick. But back to the matter at hand, Grady punting to Landes. Tamuk wants another block. Here they come. Snap comes in. Grady gets it off. Short punt. Landis catches the 44. Now drops it. The ball races past him. Loose ball at the 35. And Landis manages to fall on it. So disaster averted as the senior safety falls back on the loose ball. So the Hogs will get it at their own 37. Another curious note uh, from the Mustang sideline. We didn't see Archimus Baskerfield, uh, Basker, uh, Baskerville out on the field at all. He was on the sideline, number 27, and he didn't play any of those three uh, offensive plays for the Mustangs. You know, he went for 63 yards and a touchdown in the first half. Well, Williams has been the main back for them here in the second half. Not a lot of either Harris or Baskerville since we came out for these last 30 minutes. Single back, two receivers right, tight end either side. Thomas offset eye. Back to pass Detmer. Pressure coming. Rolling right away from the pressure. Throws for Thomas at the 40. Who catches it Denver's and is dropped three, immediately. Three-yard three gain by Torrey Thomas. Roosevelt right Calhoun on seven. the stop. Roosevelt Calhoun. Gain of a couple brings up second and eight. Thomas off and Rokeem Paul comes on. 4.38 to go and counting in the third quarter. 30-14 to 14 Havelinas in this game has a feeling of one more to move touchdown would put it to sleep. Rokeem Paul wide left, wide right singled up is Tyler Wilson. I formation with Nick Pellerin five yards behind Detmer Jr. Calling signals. Gift ball loose in the backfield. Pellerin tries to dive on it. Western says they have it and they do. And another turnover, and Western has the ball again in great field position. It seemed like a miscommunication between uh, Coy Detmer and his running back. It looked like Coy wanted to to uh, to uh, to sweep it, but it went right off the chest uh, of I believe that was Pelrin. Yes. And 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 I don't think Pelrin was ready because it looked like Pelrin was going to go up the middle. Each team has lost two fumbles now. Tom Azuski, shotgun, three receivers, two men to the left side. Tom Azuski to throw. Now rolling right under pressure. Chased by Valentine and is sacked. And Valentine on the ground with a swim move after that sack. And Caleb Valentine looks every bit like a player who's been aching to get out on the football field. That's two and a half sacks for him tonight. Elijah Jones, the receiver, wide to the left with Roberts inside him in a slot. Hand off to Williams, who goes nowhere. No gain on that run. Third down and long. Dynamite Jones, Fagata in at linebacker for the first time tonight. The man with... The first defensive touchdown of what has been four for the Hogs this season. He turned a pick for a touchdown against Texas Wesleyan back in week two. Four receivers for Tomaszewski. Play fake. Looking deep. Left side for Roberts. Throwing into coverage. Incomplete. Good coverage by Williams who went up with Roberts for the Cats. Neither guy came down with it. The Hogs are fine with that. It's fourth and long. 
Corday Robert. On the coverage for the Hoggies, number 19, Devontae Williams. Brings up fourth down. Colin Grady in the punt. Back to receive for the Hoggies, number 12, Sean. And they called that last play on the play by play them looking at a rush by Tom Mazuski. That was definitely a pass. He was just trying to run away from Valentine. That should be another sack for him. But all in good time as Grady to punt it away to Landez. Here comes the rush. He gets it off. Short kick bouncing right side of the 24. Bounces back away from the punt returner. Out of bounds. A Tamuk bounce. Rolls out the 27. A short punt by Gray. That one only goes 15 yards. So 2.55 to play in the third quarter. Hodge with the football again for that last turnover. A three and out. Puts their offense back out on the field. Hogs up by 16, 30 to 14. Cavaliers would like to thank Batman Catering and Processing for being the exclusive official catering sponsor of the first Community Bank Champion Zone Champ throughout the 2018 Havelina football season. And thank you for tuning in to the Havelina Sports Network or KTAI if you're listening on your radio. Ed Cortiso alongside myself, Mark, and Sarah bringing you another week of Havelina football. The Hogs will be on the road at West Texas next, next week. It'll be just me in Kenya to bring you that football game. And then Nate and I will finish up the season back here at Havelina Stadium against UTPB on senior night at 7 o'clock against the Falcons. Next week's game will begin at 6, so we'll be on the air at about 5.45 from Canyon. Be sure to tune in as the Hogs look for their look for their second consecutive victory over the Buffs. Havelina Madness will be coming on Thursday night, 7 o'clock in the spec. Come out and check out the Havelina men's and women's 2018-2019. Demmer under center with Nick Pellerin behind him. Single back, three tight ends, Buns to the right, one receiver wide right now. The tight ends, Hertel, Williams, and Thomas going motion left side. Pitch left for Pellerin. Cuts up across the 25 to the 30. Left sideline near the 35, following Justin Johnson right out of bounds. Nine-yard gain. Number 11, Isaiah Edwards. Or check that. Make that about an eight-yard gain. Second down and two. Tight ends going in motion. Again, bunch to the right side. Detmer under center now. Hertel goes in motion off to the left. Play fake to Pellerin. Screen left. Open man across the 40. Left side line 50 goes Tyler Wilson. Cuts back to the middle of the field to the 40. And is tripped up with a first down to the 39-yard line. 27 yards to Tyler Wilson. And the Hogs are across midfield. Terrific play call by Darren Wilkinson. Hertel coming back to the left side of the O line and setting up blocking for Wilson, who has certainly become the number one receiver in these last few weeks for, for the Javelinas. Wilson closing in on 100 yards again. Four grabs, 84 yards. I formation, two receivers for Detmer Jr. and the offense. And off Pellerin up the middle, cuts out the left side, 35, dragging a defender to the 32. Seven yard run. Detmer, meanwhile, 16 to 25 for 218, two scores. Still no turnovers from the junior quarterback. Hogs moving quickly. Western having players trotting on and off. Detmer snaps it, and Western calls a timeout and furious. 
is Frank Tristan. Ripped his headset off, was none too pleased with the lackadaisical attitude of his defense coming on and off as the Hawks are ready to snap the football. And no team that's trailing wants to waste timeouts in the second half of the game. These are the Javelinas at their best. They're pushing the pace. They're looking for uh, receivers downfield with Coy Detmer Jr. And defenses like the Mustangs aren't sure what kind of personnel they're showing, what kind of uh, coverages they're showing uh, at the line of scrimmage. And that's why you have guys coming off the field you know, long before or long after they want them to. So 1.34 to go until we reach the fourth quarter. And Sean Landes hurrying away for just a moment. Fingers crossed he'll be back in time for next time the Hobbs go on defense. 1.34 to play until we hit the fourth and final quarter. It's 30-14 to 14 Havelinas. Ball at the Western New Mexico 32. Hawks looking for their first Lone Star Conference win of the season. They can hold this lead. It's just 16 and a half minutes away. And timeout over. Both teams back on the field. Hawks going from left to right if you're listening on the radio. Ball spotted on the hash on the far side, which is also the left side. I formation. And Chris Barnes back in at halfback. Play action to Barnes. Detmer. Looking deep, right side, throwing for Dilworth in the end zone. Jump ball over the head of him and the man in coverage, that's Grigsby. Third and three, and that's the, the one of the things you can do when you have third and manageable in this kind of a spot. Might be four down territory anyway. So you figure, all right, we have basically a free down. Let's try it. Then we have two plays to try and ram it past the marker. Barnes is still in. Ryan Martinez came in for Kyle Williams. Martinez is slot right side. Hertel tight end on the right side. Dilworth and Wilson, the wide men. Pistol formation. Detmer moving Barnes to his left side. Now Martinez comes in motion. Off the right side, Detmer looking flat for Martinez. Caught. There's a flag down as Martinez cuts back inside to the 20. And is down at the 18. They might get the Hogs for a legal formation. Let's check the flag. And they're going to say a legal shift against Tamuk. They're probably going to say Martinez is moving towards the line when the ball was snapped. That is the 10th penalty against Tamuk. Those penalties have cost them 95 yards. And now third and three becomes third and eight. And I was just thinking, Nate, I can't remember the last time we saw Donovan Moore on the field in this game. On, on special teams as well. It, it has been a while. Three receivers, Martinez slot right. Dilworth and Wilson, the other receivers. Barnes and Carr in the backfield as Detmer to throw. Blitz coming. Throwing near side for Dilworth. Caught the 24. Thrown out of bounds there, but that is a first down. 13 yards on third and eight. And Kingsville closing in on the red zone as we near the end of the third quarter. Dilworth at 6'3", 190, had the clear height advantage on the 5'10", 205, Trayvon Jones of the Mustangs. Colin Grady goes out in favor of LaRooney Witte at linebacker for Western. Under center, Detmer, Pellerin behind him, Kyle Williams in motion, now two tight ends right side. Ball in the flat screen to Will to Tor Thomas wants to throw for Hertel caught inside the five. But no, now the side judge says incomplete. And maybe not the smartest move. B. John Cuther taunting the Tamuk sub on the on the other side. When you're down by 16, I want to save the taunting for later. That was the same play the Hogs scored on last year in Silver City. A backwards pass to Thomas behind the line. Then Jordan Thomas slipped behind the defense. Torrey Thomas hit him wide open for an easy touchdown. This year's addition not as successful. It would have been a sweet catch for Hurdle if he was able to cradle it. I didn't see where it hit the ground, but the referee was right on it. Said incomplete. Detmer to throw on second and ten. Looking right. Throwing for Wilson. Incomplete through his hands. Third and ten. Wilson falls incomplete. 
I remember asking Torrey Thomas before this season, they let you throw the ball again? He goes, I hope so. One for one, can't do better. Why not? So Thomas got his wish, not the intended result, unfortunately, third and 10. 49 seconds to go in the quarter. Ball to 24. Spotted on the near hash on the right side. Pellerin and Carr in the backfield. Wilson, Martinez, deal with the receiver. Slot left is Martinez. Devin to throw. Four man rush. Left side falling down is dealt with. It's a pick. It's a picked off. Right side to the 30. To the 40. Goes Cooter to the 50. Cuts back middle of the field. Is down at the 40 yard line. Now, I don't know why there's not a flag. Cuther literally taunted the Tamuk sideline as he ran past them. But there was no marker forthcoming. And just bad luck there for the Hogs. On a comeback route, Dilworth falls down and the pass floats right into the arms of Cuther. Will never have an easier interception. And he returns it all the way to the Tamuk 36. That'll go as a pick against Detmer. That really was not his fault. So the third turnover of the night for the Hogs. Western back in business at the Havilina 36. Tomaszewski on first and 10. Looks to the sideline, getting the signals in from the bench. Empty backfield. And now coming into the backfield is Williams. He gets the handle through the middle, across the 30. Open field to the 20. He will score. Williams, touchdown, Mustang. So Williams goes 36 yards, and in two plays, you go from the Hogs with an almost certain scoring opportunity to Western now with a touchdown and a chance to go for two to make it an eight-point game. Tomaszewski goes off, and now players racing on and off. Weston was not prepared to go for two. Tomaszewski still on the bench. And they're going to go wildcat here with Baskerville and Williams, and now a timeout is called by the Hogs. Williams now at 149 total yards. He came into this game with 3.07 for the season. His season high for a game was 69 yards. His longest run was 14. He has touchdown runs of 61 and 36, 149 yards on 12 carries, two touchdowns a line. If you're a Havlina fan, all too familiar to that of Xavier Turner from last week, Nate. 149 yards for DeAndre Williams. He is now the first Mustang this season to run for 100 yards or more in a game. And a quick note. Blaine Armstrong has a helmet on right now. And Armstrong almost seems like he's lobbying to get into this game. Whether it's just for this two-point conversion, maybe it's to function as a decoy, something. They're trying to help his team here. This game is now one play away from being a one-score contest. And the Hans look to be in total control a few plays ago deep in Western Territory at the Mustang 23. Set up, if nothing else, for a field goal to push their lead up to 19. And now Baskerville and Williams in the backfield ready to run the Wildcat, the two-point conversion. Roberts comes in motion. Baskerville pitches to Roberts, running left side. Turns up field inside the five, cuts left, not even close. Tackled the five-yard line. Western a little bit too fancy for their own good right there. That play never had a chance. And Mustang with 29 20. seconds to go in the third quarter, the score, the Hogs 30, the Mustangs 20. And to move to get the ball back, still ahead by two scores. You know, for the Mustangs, you know, on that on that touchdown play, it was a great, great play call from Paul Hansen. Emptied the backfield, stuck out the wide, uh, both wide, wide receivers on, on both sides, and... They had the run up the middle, and they gave it to, to Williams, and they once again exploited that open middle that the Javelinas have, haven't, haven't had a lot of success stopping tonight, and that allowed the Mustangs to get their third rushing touchdown of the night. If you look at the replay, they gave it to Williams, the two linebackers, because they spread everybody out. So in man coverage, 
you have four receivers, so you have four guys who are out just focused on their receivers. Because if it's man coverage, you have to keep your eyes focused on the guy because you don't know if he's deking you, if he's slow, or if he's going deep, if he's actually running around, if it's a pass play. You can only focus on your guy. They gave it to Williams. The two linebackers came up. And credit to the Western offensive line. The center got to the second level and got to the Tamuk linebacker with a reach block. And then Williams got through the first wave. There was nobody there. Ball bounces, and it comes right to Western on the kickoff. So a pooch kick turns into an onside kick recovered by Isaiah Perez and the Mustangs with new life in Havelina territory. And this was not like the kickoff that the Hogs couldn't recover against MSU Texas two weeks ago where just no one picked up the ball. There were two Hogs sliding trying to grab it and it bounced right off one of them right to a Western player. And I think it was Brent Hurtel and Jacob Clarkson who were trying to get there but couldn't do it. And no, it was Kyla Williams and Clarkson. So now first and 10th to 41 for the Mustangs. Baskerville in the backfield. Trips left for receivers. Give to Baskerville. Cuts left. Tripped up by Tremichael Tut. At the 39, that's a two-yard gain. You think Archimus Baskerville has ever read The Hound of the Baskervilles? I know we were supposed to read it in middle school, but I don't think I read it all the way through. Uh, neither, neither did I. So we'll call it even. And that might be the final play of this quarter. Mo the Mustangs seem like they want to get one more off. There's seven seconds and counting on the clock. Down to five, to four, three. Baskerville in motion, two, one, now. That'll be the end of the quarter. So. The end of the third quarter. All right, fans, on your feet. So that will do it for quarter number three. And an eventful finish of the third quarter, to say the least. A touch, a turnover, a touchdown, an onside kick recovery, all for Western New Mexico. They're within 10 in Tumuk territory. 15 minutes on the clock. Nate Cotiso alongside Mark Hunter. We'll be right back. This is the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI 91.1. Second down and nine. Give to Baskerville. Left side cuts across the 30. Gets grabbed by the face mask. That'll be 15 yards and an automatic first down. Three flags fly in as if there was any doubt about the call. And now Western will probably be moved into the Havilena red zone. Penalty number 11 on the blue and gold. They said 15. That's Dynamite Jones, Fagata. It didn't seem like the penalties were that big of a problem up 30 to 14. You know, they were. now you're facing... Oh. Mustang ball at the 18 on first and 10. Thomas Jusky gives right to Baskerville. Turns upfield inside the 15 to the 10. Flipped upside down at the 6-yard line. By Devontae Williams, first and goal for the purple and gold. Tomaszewski with three receivers, two men to the right side. BB and Roberts, one receiver left singled up. Roberts comes in motion, Tomaszewski 
Read option. Keeper now in trouble in the backfield. He gets tripped up by Caleb Valentine. And another tackle for loss to Valentine's total. Hogs on defense. Devontae Williams leads the pack with 10 tackles. So Michael Tutt has eight. Valentine now with his eighth. And I believe that's his fourth tackle for loss to go along with two and a half sacks. Robertson motion again. Second and goal from the seven. Handoff basketball trying to turn the corner right side. Will get strung out and runs out of bounds two yards behind the line of scrimmage. And you know what? Here comes Blaine Armstrong. The junior who's thrown for over 1,000 yards and six touchdowns this season. Looking to help his team punch one into the end zone. This is not four down territory. A field goal makes it a one score game, same as a touchdown. Four receivers. Two to the left, one to the right tight end, left side as well. Ball on the right hash. Armstrong throwing up fade. Left side trying to hit Jones for the touchdown. And he connects. Touchdown, Mustang. So on third and goal, Armstrong comes in for his first play of the night. Just stands like a statue and throws a touchdown. And Western is within four with a PAT coming up. Boy, if that's his specialty as a quarterback, that's a pretty good specialty to have. It was a perfectly thrown football by Armstrong. We were wondering openly when we would see him tonight, and now that we've seen him, we know why, we know why Armstrong was held into the fourth quarter. Spot on the extra point by Tom Azuski, and the kick sails through. There's a player down for Western, but he gets up okay. And with 13.31 to go in the fourth quarter, the score is the Havilinas 30, the Mustangs 27. And again, it was a game that looked like the Hogs had it in the bag, has all of a sudden become a nail-biter. Two quick touchdowns for Western New Mexico. And we have a three-point contest. Yeah, penalties were something that it, it didn't look like, you know, as the Havilinas are scoring touchdowns uh, early in this third quarter, that penalties wasn't something that they could completely avoid. You know, it wasn't, it was good that they were putting points on the scoreboard, but penalties were giving opportunities for the Mustangs to extend some drives and give them more chances to get into the end zone. And this is one of those opportunities now because the Mustangs are within a possession of this game. Consecutive touchdowns in only a minute 58 have transformed a 17 point deficit into a three point margin. And on that touchdown, Jones beat Crenshaw and Jones just caught his man a little flat footed Armstrong didn't even think just stepped back and threw it to the back pylon and Jones got past his man holding it in for the score and Tamuk with nobody past the 15 yard line that's where Carr and Jackson are standing four guys up around the 45 in case Grady tries to dribble this on the outside there are not there really isn't anybody except for Tory Thomas and Jacob Clarkson standing at about their own 36. The Hawks do have Armstrong, who's a little bit, who's outside the hatches on the near side left. And then center of the field is now Grady switching tees. And now Kaysan Franklin moves out on the far side right outside the hashes. Alec Davis... And Chris Barnes are centered up facing the football. Now the Hawks go to almost a regular kickoff setup. All their bases covered, basically. Grady trying to find a spot to boot it into. And we'll just kick this one to Aaron Jackson. Right side with the 15 to the 20. Upfield to the 25. Cuts left. Shakes off a tackle to the 30. Cuts back right to the 33. And after a whole bunch of shoulder shaking, is dropped to the 34. So, Western New Mexico eschewing the fancy stuff, just kicking it deep to move ball at their own 34. And we worried about this Mustang defense as the onslaught of touchdowns was coming through the wickets for Texas A&M Kingsville. They're well rested now with a whole quarter to go. Detmer under center. Pellerin heads off the field. 
late. Chris Barnes is the deep back. Two receivers coming in motion is Connor Perkins. Gets the jet sweep handoff left side. Cuts the field. Gets a block from Williams. 40. Ahead to the 43 as he's tripped up there. Brought down by Eric Dorsey. And Perkins, a shifty little fella. And picks up nine. Pellerin in, Barnes out. Barnes has not carried the ball since that fumble. Dilworth and Wilson, two receivers right side. Two tight ends right side as well. Pellerin behind Debra, who's been under center a lot more tonight than ever before. Right side, Pellerin runs to the, towards the sideline. Gets the first down and tiptoes out of bounds at the 45. So that'll move the chains. First down, Havelinas. The Hogs with it at their own 45, 55 yards away from what would be a momentum turning touchdown. Dittmer back in the single back with two receivers. Gives to Pellerin up the middle, tries to now tries to right side, gets maybe a yard. Met quickly in the hole by Tariq Myricks. Second down. That urgency we saw with the Javelina offense in the third quarter, you know, they were scoring in 82nd, on 82nd drives. They were scoring within uh, a minute of another touchdown drive. Now that they've got a three-point lead early in this fourth quarter with the possession, they're going to try and run the ball, I feel, and milk as much clock as they possibly can. I prefer they stay with the aggressive that's worked before. Still let Detmer throw the ball. That's what's worked. Turnover aside, back to throw Detmer. Right side, a screen caught by Wilson across midfield. Fighting defenders as he nears the 47-yard line. That's where he's hauled down. About two yards short of a first down, so third down and short. My thinking is, yeah, you threw a pick, but it was a fluky pick. And Detmer has been great all night long. 17-31, 231, two touchdowns. The passing game has really been on point. I'd rather keep throwing it, keep your quarterback in rhythm. Because the objective now is to get points. There's too much time to run, to run out the clock. You're only up by three now. Score a touchdown will be, should be way more important than killing time. Third down and short. Hand off to Barnes. Right side gets stacked up in the backfield. And he will lose about half a yard. And I think if you're the Havilinas, you have to punt it here. And sure enough, here comes the punt team. It's not a fun decision for a head coach to make. But you have to trust your defense and play field position. Dropping back to receive for the Mustangs. And also, you still have the lead. As disappointing as those last two touchdowns you gave up were, you can't lose sight of the fact that you're the team that's ahead. Ten and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 30 to 27 Havelinas. Johnson to snap it to De La Garza. Good snap. De La Garza trying to pooch it. Gets off a... A high deep kick that is taken by Roberts. Fair Great caught at the six. At the Poor decision by Roberts. That ball has as much chance to bounce into the end zone as it does having being down inside the five-yard line. And that's exactly what the Hogs wanted. You pin the Mustangs at their own seven. And now you put Tomaszewski back in a spot to throw the ball where I feel like this is exactly the scenario the Havlinas wanted. They're ahead. Western's deep in their own territory. Tom Mazuski has to throw the ball. If I'm Haskell Buff, I'm sitting back and saying, hey, we got him right where we want him right now. Three receivers left, pistol formation. Single back behind Tom Mazuski. Four down lineman for the Hawks. Tom Mazuski, read option, handoff, running around the left side, tackled in the backfield. By Cody Gardner. Harris tried to get around the, the defensive line. Couldn't do it. And a loss of yardage there. That's a three-yard loss. And Thomas Zuski now standing in his own end zone to take this shotgun snap with three receivers. Tamuk showing blitz. The Hogs want this safety. You can bet they want these two points. 
And the call comes in from the near side. Tomaszewski, Reed Ashen, handoff to Harris, who is immediately dropped by Brandon Jones. No gain on the play. And this Kingsville offensive line really has imposed its will in spots that that was actually for Michael Tut. Credit to the sophomore linebacker racing in for the stop. Tut has made more than one nice play tonight. He leads or is second tonight in tackles for the Haas with nine. Third and 13. Dangerous spot for the Mustangs. Tomaszewski to throw. Looking, plenty of time, deep over the middle, right into the arms of Tremichael Tut. Right side, Havelina football, actually make that Nick stiff. Now a flag gets thrown late. I don't know what Tom Azuski was looking at, that ball flew right to Nick Stiff. That seems who to be has the his trend third pick of the day, of the season I should say. It seems to be the trend with Tom Azuski this season. He has thrown the ball when he shouldn't have thrown the ball. He has seen something downfield that doesn't really exist in, in actuality and he's put this Mustangs team uh, multiple times this season uh, behind the eight ball especially now when you're deep inside your own territory and throwing such a blatant interception now the Havilinas have a chance to get six on this drive I think Tom Zuski was trying to hit Jones in first down territory on a comeback, but Stiff was right underneath that route. Tom Zuski never saw him throw it right to him. Let's check the personal foul. I think I know what it's going to be. And exactly, I was exactly right. Jamar Davis came in and hit Tom Zuski late, and they still protect the quarterbacks in those situations. Just a stupid play by Jamar Davis. And now the Hogs had the ball on the 25 rather than the 10. Single back, tight ends move left to right, two tight ends left side. Hand off to Pellerin, left side. Tries to turn the corner, gets to the 20, and inside the 20 before he's forced out. So another bad penalty for the Javelinas. They just keep piling them up. And the good news is they're still in scoring range, but a touchdown is really the elixir that they need. A field goal doesn't make you feel too safe, just puts you up by six. I don't think any coach likes to be up by six in the fourth quarter giving the ball away. Second and two at the 17. Barnes is back in, two receivers right. Play action deep ball, wouldn't be a bad idea here. They give it to Barnes, plowing through the middle. He's close to a first down. They're going to spot him a yard short, third down and one. Chris Barnes up the middle. Picks up a yard, brings up third and one. Like just a, a lack of discipline on that interception return. Just thinking you can get in a cheap shot on the quarterback on uh, that A was completely away from the play, and B, they're all you know they're always paying attention to the quarterback now, whether it's college football or the NFL. Just a silly decision. Especially on the side of the field where a lot of the referees are keying in on that play. I formation. Again, Barnes is deep. They give it to Barnes. Cuts left side. He's got a first down inside the 10. Inside the 5. Carrying men to the almost to the goal line. They mark him at the 1. Barnes looked like he wanted to take the entire Mustang defense into the end zone. He'll have to settle for a first and goal with the 1. And if I'm Wilkinson, I'm saying, hey, this guy has been the reason. This guy's the reason we're at the 1-yard line. I'm going to let him try and run it in. And whether he's feeling injured or not, Coach Wilkinson still has the confidence to give it to his 230-pound uh, fullback, running back, whatever you want to call him. Jack of all trades. There Let's you go. leave it at that. Especially, and even giving it, giving the ball after he fumbled earlier in the game, coming right back to him. Offside eye, Detmer with Barnes behind him. Detmer gives to Barnes, met in the backfield, and dropped, charging in and getting good penetration was Connor Moat. And Kingsville now with it, second and goal. Kyle Williams comes in, replacing the extra offensive lineman, Brandon Smith. Pellerin comes in for Torrey Thomas. And now Barnes goes out, and Dilworth comes in as well. Still no Donovan Moore for Tumuk. You hope he's not injured, but I haven't seen anything to indicate that he got hurt. So ball now with the two. 
Hogs spread him out a little bit. Dilworth wide right, or wide left comes in motion. Wide right is Wilson, hand off Dilworth. Right side, tries to cut upfield, trying to turn the corner, gets tackled in the backfield, back at the five. Hogs maybe outsmarted themselves a little bit there, giving it to Dilworth on the jet sweep. And now a Thomas coming in. You wonder if the Hogs will try that play where they just put three men outside, out to one side have Thomas run parallel to the line and hit him in the flat and have him just turn it upfield behind his blockers to the end zone. They have three receivers left side in a bunch and one man right. That's Wilson. A fade obviously is an option here too. Them to throw. Looking left. Going back in the end zone. Touchdown! Aaron Dilworth! The back of the end zone. Complete to number 80. Aaron Dilworth. Touchdown! Hamelina! Touchdown pass number three on the night for Detmer. And Kingsville can go back in front by 10. They take advantage of the turnover. Their second touchdown following a turnover tonight. And De La Garza on for the PAT. Good snap, good hold. Good kick. 5.52 to go in the fourth quarter. The score, the Hogs 37, the Mustangs 27. It seems like the Mustangs' mistakes of turning the football over leading to Javelina touchdowns have outweighed the mistakes of the penalties the Javelinas have made uh, at this point in the game. The Javelinas with 12 penalties for 125 yards, but it seems like those turnovers they were able to force of uh, the Mustangs was able to, well, it appears to outweigh the penalties that the Javelinas well, have caused. And as turnovers so often do happen, all three of them happening in critical situations. Two fumbles lost when the Mustangs were in Havelina territory for the chance to get points. And then the third one coming when the Mustangs were deep in their own territory, setting up the Javelinas for points. And the Hogs with two touchdowns as a result of those three turnovers. Those really are the difference in the game right now. It's a 10-point game. Without those two turnovers, score would almost certainly be very different. And now the Mustangs in a spot they did not want to be in, down by 10 with under six minutes to go, having to rely on their quarterback's ability to throw the ball to come back in this game. The Hawks are going to be coming with pressure. They're going to be looking for chances to jump routes and pick up turnovers. And for the Mustangs, they can't afford any mistakes right now. This is kind of the critical point in the game for them right now. You talked about how the Mustangs wanted to keep this a one possession game. If they were able to hold the Javelinas to three points, it's still a one possession game, and they could have done that, because you, you go back to that turnover by Tomaszewski, that personal foul penalty backed the Javelinas up to the 25-yard line, where they could have held Texas A&M Kingsville to three points, but they just weren't able to. And also, it should be said, it's clear that Frank Tristan trusted Peyton Kendrick to throw the ball more than he's trusted Tomaszewski. Kendrick comes in for a few plays, gets hurt, is now out, and you have to trust Tomaszewski, who's just 5 and 15 for 19 yards with an interception. Again, we mentioned Tomaszewski, not the only quarterback available, as a pooch kick left side for De La Garza will be taken at the 25. Heading towards the middle of the field, this basketball to the 35, middle of the field to the 40, and is spun down around the 42, so solid field position for the Mustangs. Ramos Fano has been throwing on the sideline, but it appears Tristan is more inclined to trust Tomaszewski right now. With 5.46 to go, the Mustangs need a, need a score, and they, and they need it fast. They don't even need it to be a touchdown. Just drive down if you can, kick a field goal, save a little bit of time, make it a seven-point game. That'd be just as good as scoring a TD. It's just a time-sensitive situation. And Tomaszewski opens with four receivers. And one running back in the shotgun. Now it's a reverse. Roberts coming right side. It has a, a space to the 45. Tackle to the 48. Reverse to number four. For the Roberts. And a player oh, lost his helmet. He's going to have to come Devontae off Williams. for one play. That's Devontae Williams, I believe. A Kenton, Roberts, BB, Jones are the four receivers. Roberts and Jones are the slot men. Three down lineman, four to Mook. 
Handoff Andrews into the line will get to midfield. Those are not the kind of plays that what mid that Western New Mexico needs right now. Blaine Armstrong still still throwing on the sidelines. But his usage or lack thereof tonight tells you all tells you all you need to know about the kind of health he must be. Now right through the middle goes Williams across the 30 to the 20 to the 15. And he will go the distance. A 50-yard run for DeAndre Williams. And the Mustangs back within three. The third long touchdown run of the night for DeAndre Williams. He is at 200 yards with three touchdowns this evening. How did Williams get to the end zone? Through the middle of the field once more. Fantastic night for him. And, you know, it's, it's one moment you think that the Hoggies are about to wrap this thing up. Here come the Mustangs. They still have a chance to win this game late. Grady with the PAT. Critical PAT. And it flutters through. 4.58 to go in the fourth quarter. We're back to a three-point game. The Hoggies 37, the Mustangs 34. And credit to Tristan and his offensive coordinator, Paul Hansen. The Hogs were spread out expecting a pass because that's what you do when you're down two scores with five minutes to go. You throw it. They said, nope, we're going to give it to the guy who's been breaking big runs for us. He broke another big run. It's a three-point game. 200 yards, 200 net yards for, De for uh, DeAndre Williams. And Texas A&M Kingsville coming into tonight, you know, they're allowing, let's see, where are they at? They're averaging 180, almost 181 yards, which is good for, I believe, eighth, no, seventh in the Lone Star Conference. And Williams by himself, you know, has hit two hundo. Now, there were two players who had a, an opportunity to stop Williams as he got through the middle, Devontae Williams and Dynamite Jones Fagata. And Williams went to the outside in defense of him to try and keep contained because you can't have everybody inside and let the guy break it outside. Jones just came up a little too fast, overran the play. Williams sped right by him on his way to the end zone. Grady kicks it off, kicks this one fairly deep. Jackson will take it at the 13 right side. Right up the field of the 25, cuts left to the 30, still going to the 35 and is wrapped up there. And win or lose, Haskell Buff is not going to be a happy camper. No defensive coordinator likes to see his team give up rushing totals like the Hogs have allowed the last two weeks. And they also give up 141 yards and three scores on the ground against MSU Texas two weeks ago. But, to the, but everyone, it all feels a lot better correcting these mistakes after a win. Detmer, shotgun, three receivers with Pellerin. Pitch left, Pellerin. Has a little bit of a seam, gets to the 40, still going close to the first down marker. He'll be marked a yard short. And now if you're the Hogs, you can focus on killing the clock. Western has only two timeouts. There's four and a half minutes to go. If you get two or three first downs, you won't even have to score a touchdown. You can just take a few knees and get your victory. Western with 265 yards rushing. The Hogs with 235. Both teams averaging 5.9 yards per tote. Shotgun four receivers. Detmer gives to Pellerin. Right side, he's got a first down across the 45. Smothered at the 46. But all the Hogs care about is the fresh set of downs that comes with that they short run. For another Catalina first down. Brandon Smith comes in as the extra offensive lineman. And we are under four minutes to go. Western New Mexico thinking about when they want to use their timeouts. Hawks still need a couple first downs, though. Pistol with Pellerin. Dilworth comes in motion. They fake it to him, give it to Pellerin left side. Cuts up field, but is tackled from behind. In on the tackle was Tariq Myrix. Second and ten. And now how aggressive do you want to be? I figure the Hogs will still run the ball here. I mean, why not? They've had a lot of success on it. But how aggressive do you want to be? Do you take a chance? Maybe go play action. See if you can pop something for a big play. I think 
Now Josh Hawk was in for the first time tonight. If the Mustangs or if the Hoplians were to do that, it would play right into the Mustangs' hands because if it's an incomplete pass, the clock stops. If it's a sack, then they'll have a chance to call a timeout and save some more time. Play action. Left side, Wilson on a screen, drops the ball. Screen pass intended for number 88, Tyler Wilson. And that's one of those plays you call as an offensive coordinator thinking, well, if nothing else, at least we'll keep the clock running. It's a screen. It's a long handoff. It's supposed to be a 100% completion rate. Obviously, it doesn't work that way all the time. Detmer's throw a little low. Wilson couldn't corral him. He wasn't going to go very far even if he did catch it. There were two Mustangs on his tail almost immediately. Third down and 11. Three minutes to go. And this is the play you have to make if you're Western New Mexico. Three down lineman for the Mustangs. Snap to Demmer. Right flat for Pellerin. Cuts upfield across the 50 to the 46-yard line. He'll be about three yards short of the first down. And Western New Mexico immediately signals for a timeout with 2.52 on the clock. And now if you're the Hogs, punt it and play defense. You saw what happened the last time you pinned Western deep. You got a turnover. Tomaszewski staying warm, as is Blaine Armstrong. This is fourth and four. If you're Western New Mexico, you play punt safe. Hey, you're, if you're the Hallians, you've lost three straight, you're two and five, you don't have a conference win yet. A fake wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. So, and if you're Western, number one priority, you get the football. So if you are the Mustangs, you're playing punt fake, you're playing punt protect, punt safe, whatever you want to call it. You're making sure that they know, hey, if you fake it, we're going to stop you. Punt the ball. Assuming De La Garza pins them inside the 20, which he's had a lot of success doing today, you'll have to force the Mustangs to go the length of the field with only one timeout. Fourth down and four. And Cordae Roberts goes back to receive this kick. Mustangs with a bunch of men up near the line. Johnson to snap it to De La Garza. Good snap. De La Garza trying to cough and corner it to the near side. Roberts comes up. Ball bounces at the 18, rolling towards the end zone. And right there on the spot to down it was Keyshawn Rowe. He tracked it all the way and touched it down at the 12. So Western New Mexico 88 yards away from what would probably be a game-winning touchdown, but they only need a field goal. Now their kicker, Colin Grady, just one of three on field goals so far this season. But they have another kicker on the roster in Ignacio Correa, but he has not kicked in a few weeks. And Grady has kicked all the PATs tonight. So I would expect him to be the field goal kicker if that opportunity presented itself. As long His only field goal of the season came from 35 yards. Grady, I should mention, was also this team's kicker last season. In the spec, come join us for Havling of Men's and Women's Havling of Madness. Check out what the Havling of Basketball teams will be looking like this weekend. And then next weekend, one week from Friday and Saturday. So 2.43 on the clock. Western New Mexico with one timeout. They trail by three. They've run for over 200 yards. DeAndre Williams has 200 yards rushing by himself tonight. With just 2.43, how much can Western New Mexico afford to run the ball? But I guess we'll find out. And in the defense of whatever they decide to call, the running game has been infinitely more effective than anything they've tried through the air. And they've exploded on uh, so many long runs with uh, DeAndre Williams and, and Baskerville uh, in the first half. Running is, well, that might be the best uh, option they have at this point. And Grady last season was, was five of six on field goals, including a 40-yarder. So he is not just a, uh, a pitch and putt kind of kicker. He can kick them from a little bit away from the uprights. Just a comparison, Western New Mexico with 35 pass yards, 265 rush yards. 88 yards away from the end zone. Haas with four down linemen. Roberts goes in motion. 
Read option, hand up to Baskerville, right side. He is submarined immediately by Tremichael Tutt, and the rest of the Hog defense arrives to stop him, and Baskerville lost his helmet. And the clock, you'd expect to keep ticking. And now Williams the in. The, the clock is stopped with 2.35 on the Hogs. On and now they finally start it. Four receivers, four Tom Mazzucci. This has to be four down territory no matter what with only one timeout. Play fake. Pressure coming. Throws it up. Left side to no one in particular. And he's just lucky that wasn't picked off. It's third and ten. It's almost like Tom Mazzucci was just like, well, forget this. And just threw it away. But he threw it away in the wrong place. He, uh, the better idea would be to throw it out of bounds. But, you know, again, so much air under that ball. If Jackson were maybe three or four steps quicker, it could have been a game-ending interception. Third down and ten. Thomas Uski to throw. Pressure coming. Rolling right. Can run with it. Gets to the 15 and is shoved out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down. Pushed out of bounds, number 19, Devontae Williams. I'm surprised he went out of bounds. I figured he'd try and cut back, spin, because getting the yardage in that situation is way more important than saving the time. Maybe he just didn't want to take a hit. But now it's fourth and six. This is fourth down in the ball game, folks. Players coming on and off. If you're Western... Uh, there seems to be some confusion. I just use the timeout here. You want to make sure you have the perfect play call on fourth and six. You don't want to just run any old play. But here we go. Three receivers for Tomaszewski. Roberts comes in motion to throw. Here comes the pressure. Throwing it up near side. Trying to hit BB. Incomplete. And I'm really surprised. That Western didn't run the ball more than once on that series. Yeah, they tried uh, two incomplete passes we saw and a scamper out of bounds by, by Tomaszewski. Uh, Tomaszewski. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure why you would throw in the direction of Jordan Seminot similarly uh, because that could have been another, another interception. I feel like that's something that we keep saying about Tomaszewski throughout, this, throughout tonight. I mean, this is going to sound like a real backhanded compliment for Thomas Uzi, but maybe that's just the only, maybe that, that's just all they really have in the playbook for him, because they've run, they've done that multiple times, and I just sent a receiver deep and one-on-one one and have him throw it up and kind of cross their fingers, and it hasn't, it hasn't worked tonight, other than getting a couple pass interference calls on Aaron Jackson. I don't know, you're right, I don't know why you'd throw it seven out there. Jet sweep, handoff, Perkins, right side, just needs one first down, trying to get around the corner, needs to stay in bounds. He did. And Western quickly calls their final timeout with 1.34 to go. Picked up by number 26, Vincent Brown. Now to say, I don't, they obviously ran the ball more than once, but they only called one running play in that series because the other one was obviously unscripted. Thomas Uchi just ran out of time and decided to run with it. But I know time is, is short, but the run game has worked better for you. You've got to go with what's worked, not to mention the fact it's not like they haven't been able to score from long distance by running the ball tonight. Now, best case scenario for Western New Mexico right now is just get the ball back down three after like a missed field goal or on the 20-yard line with just a few ticks left. Now, Perkins gained four yards with second and six. And if I'm the Hawks here, I take every single pass play in my playbook and throw it in the trash. Run the ball, waste these waste this time and go home almost certainly with a win. Now elsewhere on the LSC, in case you're wondering, Tarleton, State's, Tarleton State has jumped ahead of MSU Texas 28-21 to in the fourth quarter. Shotgun, Detmer, handoff, Pellerin, hit in the backfield, trying to squirm his way towards the line of scrimmage. Gets back maybe to the original line. Now there's a player down for Western, and he gets up. I think that was Connor Moat. Clock keeps ticking. Hogs have two timeouts, so they can afford to run this down each time. 
and call a timeout before the play clock expires. And I'd do that, nothing against Detmer, but I would do that rather than take a chance that Detmer can waste every possible second. Now they're at the line with the clock at 15. Detmer should take his time. He's under center already and sends two men in motion. And snaps the ball. Hand off left. Trying to get around the corner as Pellerin gets tackled the 15. The Hogs snap that ball with nine seconds on the play clock. Now, based on where the game clock is right now, if they hadn't snapped the ball at that point, they could have almost run it out or at least run down to a situation where they just had to snap the ball once and the clock would have would have run out. Could have been a now one it's, or, it's one or fourth two and 15. Difference. And the Haas, this is really smart. They're not kicking a field goal because you don't want to have a blocked kick or a bad snap go the other way on you. They're just going to run a play and turn the ball over on downs or maybe have Detmer run around or someone take a safety. Detmer's just going to throw the ball out of bounds, I think, here. And now Tamu calls, I think they called the timeout. And they called it, if I'm not mistaken, with three or four seconds left on the play clock. There's still 10 seconds on the game clock. But if you're the Havilinas, turning it over on downs is way more appealing than kicking a field, or trying, I should say, a field goal, especially with the snap issues they've had all season. So the ball's for 15. It's fourth down and nine. Now this feels like it'd be a perfect spot for Donovan Moore because he's a fast guy who can throw the ball. Just have him run around and then just chuck it as far as he can throw it, maybe through the back of the end zone. And maybe you leave two or three seconds on the clock. Or if nothing else, I don't know how much you trust the speed of your fastest guy. Give him the ball, tell him, run that way towards the other end zone, take the safety. But then obviously you don't want him to get tackled at the 10 with, or, you know, at the 15, 20 yard line with two seconds left and set the other team up for a field goal. This is a tough spot for a coach. But I think the Haas are just going to run a normal play. And if they don't get the first down, they will turn it over on downs inside the western 20-yard line. Hawks come out single back, two receivers right. Detmer, pitch right for Pellerin. Trying to get around the corner. Cuts up inside the 10. I think he's short of the first down, however. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the 7. A couple yards short of the first down. Four seconds remain. Four seconds remain. And now we'll see if Western New Mexico can pull a, uh, a Cal Stanford or a uh, Miami Duke here on the last play of the game. Ball goes over on downs. First and ten. Mustang. Because I don't care who you have at quarterback. You can't reach the end zone from the seven-yard line. This is all going to be just pass and lateral, pass and lateral. Not everybody's Patrick Mahomes from the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he might true. have the arm to, to get it from the seven-yard line. That would be something I'd be interested zone. in finding out. Yeah. One of those things that maybe, unfortunately, we'll never know. The Hogs, with three down linemen, they have Seminot, Stiff, Williams, Hendricks, and Jackson standing back at the 30. And now Stiff and Jackson back up to the 35. Tomaszewski. A screen middle of the field to Roberts. Left side to the 20. Towards the sideline, he's going to get tackled, and that will be your ball game. So the clock runs out on the final play of the game. And one thing we didn't say tonight, Nate, a great football game here at Havilena Stadium tonight. The final score, the Hogs break their three-game losing streak. They win this by a score of 37-34. Nate and I will take a one-minute break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. We'll go over the final totals. We'll recap everything that happened in the third win of the season for the Havlin as they knock, they knock off Western New Mexico at home. 37 to 34. We'll be right back on the Havlin Sports Network and KTAI 91.1.
The Javelinas get off the Schneid in the Lone Star Conference. They pick up their third win of the season, break a three-game losing streak. They knock off Western New Mexico 37-34 here at home. Maker Tiso alongside myself, Mark and Sarah and Nate. A fun football game to watch here on homecoming, and the Havilians get to have their cake and eat it too. Entertaining football game. They get a win in front of their fans here on homecoming and throwback weekend. And a... Uh, a good end of the evening for Darren Wilkinson and company for the first time in too long, probably. Tonight's game, I felt, had the had the interest in the entertainment of a serial drama. You didn't really know what was going to come next. You saw the Javelinas open some, some double-digit leads early in the third quarter and even in the fourth quarter, but there was still a chance that the Mustangs were on the comeback trail and, and could have taken this game over, but... You know, in the end, the, he the hero wins. You know, the protagonist wins the game. Uh, for And that being uh, the Javelinas of Texas A&M Kingsville. And, yeah, plenty of, I guess you'd say, plot twists, funky stuff, turnovers and uh, trick plays and, like, and trash talking and big plays. We didn't expect to see them with Western New Mexico breaking that big run to shave the deficit from 10 back down to 3. And then the Hogs giving the ball back with a three-point lead and forcing the turnover on downs. Hogs allowed 334 total yards, 270 on the ground. Tamuk ran up almost 500 yards total offense today. 244 through the air, 254 on the ground. And a big night tonight for Nick Pellerin. 153 yards on 24 carries and a touchdown, a 62-yard rush. Tyler Wilson, five grabs, 92 yards, the second consecutive week. He's top 90 yards receiving. Corey Detmer Jr. throws three touchdowns, throws a 240.